Welcome to Co-op Mode, round 139. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Friends Unite. I am one of your hosts, Todd Ostra from beautiful Savage, Minnesota. Oh my goodness. My son has almost graduated. I'm going to be that old dad in an empty nest. Joined by Mark, the Canadian Caribbean, who uh, is still alive, hasn't um, uh, gotten killed by Noxus fumes with his printer. Good to see you, Mark. Hey, good to see you. Stay yeah. safe. I can happily say I've been doing everything outside. Everything's good. Uh, I haven't uh, near killed anyone with my printing. Um, I'm finishing up some some Mandalorian armor, so I'm hoping to reveal that in the next week and a half or so. I have a con coming up, but uh, yeah, yeah, no no near death experiences with uh, with fumes or anything like that. It's been a good time. Very, very cool. And then we are joined by a good friend uh, of the Secret Friends Unite. And and I don't know at this point, he might be a five-timer. I'm, might be compared times, with all yeah. the co-op modes, Secret Friends Unite, all the shows, and that's Chris Johns, better known as CJ, from One Hour, One Decision. My goodness, Chris, welcome back. Yeah, thank you for having me. I can't I can't wait till I get the nice, you know, cigar cigar coat from you guys. So, you know, I'll just check for that in the mail every day. Yep. Oh yeah, it's in the mail. Believe me. It's it's <laughs> there. I mean, we ordered it from Timu, so I don't know what it will be. It may be the size of a Barbie coat. Um so just be prepared for it. Yeah, I'm fine yeah, with exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. You can put it on like Master Chief and you can look all fancy <laughs> with a jacket. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but good to good to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so this episode is going to be a fun one. Uh, we're getting close to kind of E3. I don't even recall it, Summer Games Mess. Um, but this episode is going to be about Xbox, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're going to talk about the future of Xbox this uh, episode. And so we thought bringing on a guy who uh, lives and dies by the uh, random generator for Game Pass, and that is Chris. So um, Chris will tell you all about how to access his shows and his content and this cool stuff he does at the end of the show. But before we do that, we got to thank some very important people. Yes, we have to thank all the wonderful people that support us over at patreon.com slash secret friends unite, where you can head right now for a free seven day trial. Check out all of these shows, ad free, some extra bonus content and, uh, and a whole bunch of cool little perks like that. Uh, we have to thank our friends with benefits tier, including John Sedorf, the Phoenix sisters cosplay team, Matthew Keel and Corey and HD, as well as our BFF tier, Sean Stella and Henry Nias and the amazing, amazing Missy Merchant. Again, patrons get all these shows either early or ad-free or exclusive or whatever. Like there's a ton of stuff over there. So head on over to patreon.com slash secret friends unite for a free seven day trial and see what all the fuss is about. Yeah, Charlie just dropped a new episode of Secret Friends Unite Spotlight with a British professor who is viewing all of the original Star Trek episodes. So they have a good conversation about that. Um, I'll, I'll be curious to see what a, uh, a gentleman has to say about Star Trek um, with Charlie. So check that out. It's, it's, it's free for Patreons right now. We did our cool, um, if you want to check out a cool episode with Mark being on it, was our Spinner Rack where we reviewed Star Wars Dark Empire, a mm -hmm. Star Wars legacy title. Mm, okay. so very good at this point um if you want to um check out all of our content it's all there it's really fun and um yeah we'd love to check out a free tri uh, trial of it if you can so with that oh my goodness we get to buy rent return this week and mark did his due diligence before we even started this up chris didn't have an opinion on this so um we will have to gauge where, where where chris stands in this one and because we're kind of in the mode of like companies doing really dumb stuff um i thought i would look back at like past snafus with gaming hardware and so our buy run return this week is gaming snafus with hardware um and then i, I picked three joy con drift the red ring of drift or dr the red ring of drift <laughs> the red ring of death with the xbox 360 and the famous six -ass axis controller where playstation says rumble is old technology. So that was the <laughs> rumbleless PlayStation controller. Um, Mark said, are we picking the thing we want or are we picking the worst thing? And I'm like, we're going all in and celebrating failure. So we're going to buy the worst one. 
So, yeah. um, uh, so before we go into it, Mark, I think we should, uh, you know, have an opinion for someone who we didn't explain the rules, and that's Brendan <laughs> Meyer, the winner gamer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Brendan uh, said, so I'm thinking like th- I, I should reverse what he says here, but mm. I'll read it how he did it. But I think based on our rules, this should be flipped for him. Flip. The buy yeah. and the return really should be flipped. But so he wrote buy no rumble because I usually turn rumble off anyway. Rent Joy-Con drift because you can still force through and play. Usually I've had some Joy-Con drift where you just can't. Um, and then return the red ring of death because it did. Um, <laughs> so, so I think that's the worst. He's saying that one's the worst. So I think that moves up to his buy. Exactly. He, he was buying the one he could live with. He's like, the, the, what's exactly. the worst thing will happen? I can still play. I just yeah. can't feel the uh, bed shake when, uh, you know, Kratos is getting a lady. That's the <laughs> that's only it. thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> and he's uh, okay with Mario going around in circles. Apparently <laughs> can't get out of the return. And he didn't think about putting his Xbox 360 in the oven with a towel. Apparently that was supposed to right. heat up right. the glue, <laughs> reapply the glue. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or just turn it on with a towel around. It. I heard that. that, oh, that yeah, exactly. Likes to be warm. As well. always, tell you, um, always keep your electronics warm. That's that uh, great advice. We we did also get a, a last minute edition from, uh, mm. from famous Seamus who uh, again, I believe these should be reversed, but I'm going to read it as he wrote it. So buy no rumble since rumble is not necessary to make a game fun. Rent Joy-Con drift since that can be solved using a pro controller. Fair point. Uh, and return red ring of death as someone who had two Xbox 360s red ring. Oh. This one is personal. Also, it costs <laughs> Microsoft. <and Bill. laughs> He's putting okay, it out I on uh, on uh, <laughs> was it Peter Moore who's the yeah. the president at the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. So I think reverse those. Red Ring of Death is the worst, and he can live. Um, he can live with the no rumble. So yeah. there we go. Our two. Uh, oh wait, another brand new edition from the Nias Ooh. family. Buy Red Ring of Death because my Xbox 360 didn't shut didn't shit out which is a oh. language from oh, harry right. um <laughs> of course sean's blaming his son <laughs> sure thing henry's been listening to me too much i apologize uh rent Joycon drift because they service it for free which is uh yeah absolutely i sent like six joy cons i think six, six holy crap wow. between my wife and i it was just and we had like held them for a little while so it was like two at first and then it was four and then it was just like let's send six of these um but it was all free they just serviced it sent it back it was six fine. sets or um, six individual joy cons six individual joy cons okay 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 and return no rumble rumble adds to the experience of the game so there we go um so the buy i i think this is correct i think this is like the buy is is the worst one the worst um, yeah maybe uh or no well his xbox 360 didn't shit out no no so yeah you're right you're right so i think this maybe yeah the he's thinking like game. rumble is the least it, it, it was the worst for him yeah that's which uh, is interesting that so okay. we've got we've got the the um the Joy-Con drift in the middle of all of these. Are any of us going to mix it up? Let's see. I don't know. Chris, um, you want to jump so, in first? Yeah, Chris, I don't even know if you own a Switch. I do. It's just my kids always use it. We did have to return one controller once. So we did get the drift um and yeah, I mean like <sighs> If it's the, I don't think that's, I think that's not the worst thing. I would probably, if, if we're going, so return would be the one that is least likely. The least right? offensive. Least offensive. So I I would say the drift is least, of, I mean, but again, I don't really play the game, play the Switch that much. And and um, uh, to the point earlier mentioned, you can replace, you use a separate controller and then be good with it yeah. too. So like there's a, there's an option there. Um. I'm going to go a little controversial and say uh, rent the Red Ring of Death because because the X well one the 360 was like near and dear to my heart because that was like probably one of the best consoles minus the Dreamcast that I've ever had and I didn't have that problem I didn't have the Red Ring issue oh, and wow. and I had like an earlier console too and um, 
and yeah, like and the fact that yes, they they Microsoft definitely screwed up, uh, but they were willing to replace the whole system too, which was nice. Like yeah. I I have to like, and like, but the I and I have to say bye for the Rumble because it just it just felt like the era that 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 whole PS3 era was like Sony being as arrogant as possible. You're being a fail, right? Like <laughs> like it was just like, come on, guys. They just like yeah. it, it was almost like an Apple levels of arrogance with their with yeah. some of the excuses that they had. So it was like, no, I'm not, I'm I'm good. So that's my thoughts. I, you're not I, buying that. You're not I, buying that. Yeah. You don't have the six access somewhere in your 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 Hall of Fame controllers. No, no. I do not. I kind of I I respect those decisions, and I I kind of almost want to mirror them, really, um, because like you said, Joy-Con drift. And Red Ring of Death. And I did experience Red Ring of Death mm-hmm. at least two or three times. Oh, wow. And my brother had at least one on his. Like, we had bad luck. Because at that point, it was like we were in, like, I know I was in university. So we wanted to play separate things. We were online. So we both had an Xbox 360 at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, yeah, man. Like, we had some shit luck. <laughs> um with with that console, but never a problem to have it replaced. Right. At That's all. That's good. No coffins um, involved. No. Yeah. No worries. I never spent another cent on an Xbox 360 that I didn't have to or want to, like, you know, upgrading, whatever. Um, so, like, I can't complain about that almost any more than I can complain about the Joy-Con stuff. Um so I think, I think I'm going to do the PS3 rumble as my buy, like mm. doing that. And the level, the level of, for the same reason as Chris, I think the level of stupidity of trying to say like, we're not doing rumble because it's old technology and like trying to make that like cloud of like what we're doing is awesome Mm -hmm. you should pay more for us taking out features because we're great it wasn't the ps2 awesome get a second job for this piece of you want to rumble if you want rumble buy a ps2 (laughs) yeah right like it was that kind of like like you said just straight arrogance Yep. And at least, at least Microsoft and Nintendo were like, "Oh, we messed up with this stuff. We're going to fix it for free." Right. Uh, I am going to rent as the second most offensive the Xbox 360 Red Ring of Death, because when that happened, your console was dead. You couldn't play for a little bit until it was sent back. At least with the Switch and the Joy Con, which I'll return, um, I have a ton of spare Joy Cons. You know, like you, you just kind of acquire them over time, I guess. Um, pro controllers. There's there are different ways to play. Your switch isn't completely dead. You could be a mostly handheld fan and even go out to like Walmart or something and pick up some extra Joy-Con. Wait till they ship them back and go return them. Like you know what I mean? Like unless around that, that is what I would have done too. Unless it's your Switch Lite, and then you're screwed. Right. Then you're screwed. my system. Don't buy the Switch Lite. I guess I don't know. Um, I've never owned a Switch Lite, so I can't complain. Uh, yeah. I can't. Say, I can't either. So we're basically saying until they come for me, <laughs> screw y'all. Well, I enjoyed my situation. No. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm not. I. I just. I haven't heard anyone with a Switch Lite that has had Joy-Con problem. Like my brother mm. has. One has never had a problem with his Switch Lite, but he's returned several Joy-Con from his Switch. Yeah, because he's a lush and has both. <laughs> um, he's drunk on Switch. <laughs> he's crazy. Uh, so I don't. Yeah, I don't know if anyone has a Switch Lite and has experienced Joy-Con drift. Let me know. I want to hear those horror stories and maybe that could kind of skew my, my reference. Imagine you lose your, you lose your your animal crossing Island when you send in your switch light. Right. Cause that's been destroyed. Your joy con. They're like, if we don't have the exact same one or if we can't do it, you might like, you might send in a neon green, you know, Splatoon joy con and get a gray back. I haven't had that experience happen, (laughs) but it is a printed possibility from Nintendo of like, Hey, you want to send in your banana controller from Fortnite? Cool. You might get something different back. Like again, has it happened to me? I don't want to send in my banana controller, but I will, if I have to, um, (laughs) 
you know, so like sending in your whole Switch Lite, especially if you have a special edition, like one mm-hmm. of the Pokemon editions or something like that, mm-hmm. with all your saves on it, man, yeah, that would be a – again, that would put it at least on the level of an Xbox 360 mm-hmm. Red Ring of Death because your whole system's bricked. Your whole thing shut down. So – if that's the case, if someone can convince me that that's a, a, a big issue with Switch lights, yeah, I'm I'm changing my. But for now, I'm keeping that PS3, Xbox, Switch. We'll go in that order. Classic um, Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Todd. What about you then? Okay, I'm going to do something a little different here because I, I have, I've had the mind swell that I, I think of the, the scenario. So quite honestly, I am – so if we're doing the, the era of like least offensive, I'm, I'm returning the six axis because that was one year and done. They got rid of the problem. It's never to be brought back. I don't even think they would sell you an S6 Axis. I don't know if you can find one. They're probably collector's items. Um, and most people didn't buy a PlayStation 3 at launch because it was a, it was like a billion dollars. So quite honestly, no one even used that thing because I don't think anybody owned the PlayStation 3 until like four years later. So there you go. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Yeah. I'm being practical here. Xbox 360, the red light of the red ring of death, once again. It was a period of time they fixed the issue and it's done. They had different revisions. I also did not have a red ring of death. So we're kind of like very, we, we're in a good space. You know, yeah. we're in a very caring environment. Um, but Dishonored killed my Xbox where I would try to play Dishonored and it just would stop playing. Wow. It, it wasn't, didn't red ring. It just, for some reason, like it, that's where I traded it in. Um, Wow. So I would say because they fixed the issue, it cost them a billion dollars. They did fix consoles. They sent you a coffin. And, you know, it's kind of funny, like a dead child. <laughs> very tiny coffin. Very, very, very tragic. Very sad. <laughs> it played it played taps for some reason. I don't know why. It was very, very emotional. Um, and then I'm going to buy the, the, the Joy-Cons because Nintendo has never fixed the damn issue. Yes, they're repaired, <laughs> but they'll still sell you the same problem over and over again. Mark, how many Joy-Cons do you have? And that's your response. Well, let's buy more. <laughs> so, I've, I've, okay, I've never bought a pair of Joy-Con because some broke. I've bought like sure, special you just have a lines. Lot. Yeah, you just have a lot. That like I bought the the two sets of Splatoon ones. I ordered one yeah. set from Japan because I wanted to have both colors. So like the ones you could buy here in a store were like I forget forget what it is like green on the left and pink on the right. And then the if you bought the console the switch or the the Splatoon edition switch, it was reversed. But you could buy those separately in Japan. So I can do two neon greens, one on each side, or two neon purples, or mix them up both ways. So I wanted that. And then I bought the, um, like I said, I bought the Fortnite ones with like the banana on the side. Um, So like I bought, you know, and then the ones that came with my my Switch um, OLED, like the white ones. Um, So I've never specifically gone out to buy Joy-Con because a set broke. But because we now have so many in the house, the chances of them breaking. I also have to say, I changed my mind while I was listening to Chris. <laughs> I wasn't. I was going in with the Joy-Con as the the number one, um, or or possibly Xbox as the number one. Um, so yeah, you 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 definitely like brought up some good points and I was, I was listening to that and you kind of like shifted my, but I couldn't be shifted again, Todd. So yeah. continue your anger. Well, my friend, let's just put it this way. If switch to T O O as I'm calling it, I've dubbed it comes out. I don't, I want those joy cons to be thrown in an ocean, like where the uh, Atari 50, uh, 2600, three uh, ET cartridges are. I never want to see those joy cons again. I know people have a lot of them. Well, keep your old damn switch. Keep it away from me. <laughs> Do you Toss them in a bin. Do you think they'll add, they'll, they'll allow you to use your current joy cons? I've heard they're going to work wirelessly because of those weird oh. magnet, the suction magnets they're going to bring in for the switch two won't plug on but they'll be able to be used like the old wiimotes on the uh wii u <laughs> so oh, it's okay. once again right. okay. let's bring in old technology that you know you could do stuff yeah. like arms or or um, yeah it's an extra mario controller kart, maybe to play okay. the right. worst way of playing mario kart mark <laughs> <laughs> easily. easily people are seriously gonna miss that come on 
Oh well. I don't think uh, that anyone is can play with a single Joy-Con controller. <laughs> if, uh, if you're listening and you do, let me know. It's like good in a emergency situation. But that's I okay. have a health professional you can reach out to. <laughs> Mental health is uh, is very important. In, in like an airplane, like waiting room, like at the airport, where you're like, let's set up one switch and pay, hand off a Joy-Con because their flight got delayed. The way um, God intended, on a seven inch screen with two big adults three feet away. <laughs> it's exactly <laughs> the best. Smash <laughs> players where they're two centimeters tall. I can tell what's going on. Oh well. <laughs> well. Hopefully everyone enjoyed this ride. You can send your hate letters to me, but uh, there we go. And and you can tell us all about your woes with your Joy Cons. Um, and if you got a six access, let us know. I'll buy it from you for like two bucks. Oh, okay. I'll plate it in gold. Uh, there we go. So, gentlemen, what have you been gaming? Oh, Chris. should I go first? Chris, right. yeah. yeah. Um, well, I've been. Uh, deep underwater with uh, Harold Halibut. Uh, it's a it's a Game Pass game that came out fairly recently. It's such a unique uh, art style to it. It's kind of like a claymation look to it, stop motion animation. And um, <clears throat> I had watched uh, Dave Jackson over at Tales from the Backlog play it way back when Steam was doing like their like demo week or whatnot. And I was like, this looks so weird. It's so like unique looking. And it's like, it's, it's essentially like a, a, a new age point and point and click adventure game. Mm. And um, yeah, I was, I've, I've been like, the characters are great. Um, the writing has been great too. There's, there's been a lot of vocabulary words that I've learned from playing this game. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, so I've been, I've been having a good time with that. Uh, Return to grace, super short game also on game pass two hours long. Uh, and actually, um, uh, Larry from world one, one actually interviewed the developers recently. For oh, really? Them. Okay. Yeah. And super, again, super short game. Uh, it is like, it's just like a, it's about this, um, this woman who goes to this planet to try to re reinvigorate or re revive, sorry. Uh, this AI that used to help, uh, humanity and uh so it's like kind of going through that whole story and it's cool it's it's again another game uh great writing and um and then finally got i kind of hopped back oh, on. i was gonna ask you really quick yeah, yeah. i looked at that return to grace and i was just looking the steam page yeah it kind of gives me mist vibes in a way it's not it's not a very difficult game it's and again that's okay. why it's like there's like a couple of parts where you're just like okay it's kind of challenging like some of the puzzles are kind of challenging but it's not it's not very I, like literally you could be done in 2 hours well and and the the other cool part about it is uh, there are multiple endings in this game too oh well, that's cool so based on it's your choice it's only 2 hours it's only wow. 2 hours and, the, and yeah they they crammed that all in in 2 hours so i was wow. very impressed and uh, and finally v rising uh it they it finally went to 1.0 uh, started playing that a little bit again. It is a vampire survival action RPG, I guess. Uh, I don't like the survival parts, the crafting and all that stuff, but um, the combat in it is really fun. The whole vampire mechanic overall is really good. It's really well done. Um, cool. So, and they finally added co- controller support. So I was super happy about that too. Oh, that's I, I. Oh, it didn't have it. It didn't have it initially. Oh, so. Okay. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Um, that V Rising game, um, it kind of reminds me what a Legacy of Kane, the first game, <sighs> Man, could have that's... been or could be if they rebought it back. Because yeah. it yeah. reminds me of that. Like, you know, Kane was this vampire badass who's going things. Yeah. But then it's like, but you know what? You need a house and yeah. you need to do these things. And, and and it's like, but I've heard there's co-ops, so you could have someone yep. actually take care of that meal. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Almost like you, you could can, have a um you can have clans what's essentially clans. What's his, then, uh, what's his um what's Raziel. his um <laughs> no what's what's uh what's Dracula's like uh oh, gosh, human sure. called Renfield? Renfield, yes. Yeah. That's right. You can you can get a Renfield to do all the, the bad work for right. you. And actually you can get Renfields in the game too, just so you know. Oh, nice. <laughs> so it's like they, they really thought about the whole vampire lore in this. Um so it's it is really cool. Um but yeah, that's uh that's that's what I've been playing recently. So that's awesome. So 
I'm going to ask you both about this because it seems like a lot of the games today, it's like, well, it's just not enough to be an action RPG. We have to add romance. We have to add cozy elements. We have to add survival, roguelike, souls-like, or something. Are you like, are like, you a huge fan of that? Because it sounds like Chris, you're like, I don't like this part of the game. I'm like, well, does that mean you're going to keep with it or you're going to bounce? So that's what I worry about that, you know, if they add that element. Or do you like, I love it because it's like, oh, it's more to do and more to to, to spend your time on. Um. If I'm playing a game like like this, I I have to make sure other people are playing it that I know, and then that they they really enjoy doing the building part of it. So I'm like, cool, I'm gonna go. If you want me to go pick up stuff, like go go gather stuff, I'll do that. Um, but I don't I don't have the mind to build, you know, structures and stuff like that. And I just get really I get really frustrated when I see someone else's castle look like gorgeous, and then I have this like little shack in the corner over there so yeah. so yeah wait a house doesn't have three walls yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how i think about it but. this is supposed to have a roof <laughs> um, what <laughs> what <laughs> terrible uh yeah for me it's it's it depends on the game completely and the mechanic if i don't notice it then it's it's great because you know you, you have to mix things up if it's only an action game or only a platforming game there's only so much you can do with those but occasionally you'll get a mashup that really works that you enjoy both pieces of or they fit together seamlessly or you kind of don't really notice it it's when one piece feels tacked on hmm. or annoying or something. And I, I've noticed this. I've been replaying the Pokemon games, going through, and I started uh, Ultra Moon recently. And I'll, I, I, I won't talk about this in the what you've been playing thing, so I'll skip it over. But <laughs> in, in that game, there are certain things like, and in a lot of Pokemon games, they always add these things of like, even in like Scarlet and Violet, there's, um, you know, you can do picnicking and you can do this and you can do that. And it's, a lot of times I'm sure for competitive players, there are reasons to do those kind of things or for players that the, the main becoming the best overall, becoming the Pokemon champion or whatever is not why they play the game. They want to do something cute. They want to take pictures with their Pokemon. They want to do this to do that for all of those things. Learning those mechanics is just like, that's cool. I'm never going to do this again. Like give me a powerful team and let me golden path my way through the elite four cool let's do that i don't want to go on a picnic like that is not why i want to play pokemon like i'll play pokemon snap all day long but like i don't know my mainline pokemon games i want to battle i want to collect them i want to evolve them i want to power them up and like slowing down to take a picnic or like a beauty contest or something something like that is like that is not what it is for me um so it's those kind of things where it's just sometimes they tack it on and it's like, man, you could have focused on making this game like run better or a little bit better if you didn't add like the Pokemon beauty pageant animations or something like that. Like, so that, you know, like it, it's those kind of things that drive me crazy um, or, or just like make me notice it. But I love when it's done right and you get this weird mashup of like, oh man, those two things shouldn't have worked together or I don't usually like card mechanics or something like that. But like this game pulled it off because I was really drawn into the platforming. Um, yeah. The, the, I love that kind of surprise, but um, Chris, like, you know, you saying that it's just, it's, it's so funny. Cause it's like, I know exactly what you mean. It's like, I love this part of the game. What about the other part? We don't talk about the other part. Yeah. Like, that's a, you know, like, yeah. I just watched the Lion oh. King with my son. It's like, you know, tell me about the dark part over there. We don't talk about the dark part. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Do you just want to rewatch the part where, um, uh, you know, the dad dies? Sure. Let's just yeah. focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you like nightmares, kids? Yeah. Um, it reminds me of um, 3D Mario. Was it 3D Mario where they added the Captain uh, Toad levels? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, get those out of my game. It breaks all of my momentum. Like, why am I doing this? Thank God they gave him his own game so he can stay out of my Mario games. Stay mm -hmm. over there, Toad. Hate yeah. that. 
Um, the game I liked, and I'm normally not a guy who likes like, oh, geez, don't make me do that. It's annoying. Um, Mass Effect 3, surprisingly, when they added the uh, kind of almost mandatory multiplayer, mm-hmm. um, and which was crazy because they didn't have that in the other games, but it, but it did make it fun, and they made that part fun, which I really liked because you had to like save the universe, you have to like get territory and stuff like that. I'm like, that's cool. Um, and the other part was relationships. I thought that was cool because it was a romantic pierce. You have those missions to build relationships with your crew, and then you can choose who to be romantic with. Um, sometimes it's kind of annoying what you have to do. It's like, okay, now I'm just being a little pushy. This would not be, you know, this would not go in modern times dating. Like, oh, yeah. why are you Talks following me, you creep? And uh, yeah, <laughs> but Jack loved me. You can't tell me she didn't. Jack loved me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, there's there's examples where it's kind of crazy. And the other ga- examples, like people are big into like Fire Emblem. And I'm like hearing about the most recent, like we have tea parties and we go to class, but then we go out in battles and we we kill each other and somebody dies. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Why not? Okay. Well, thank you for your input, folks. Let us know, though, if you're interested in like these mashups, because it seems like that's becoming a bigger and bigger thing these days. So, um, but you just love your your thoughts on it. Maybe we're olds. Maybe we just aren't ready for these like synergistic games. But let us know, and maybe Mark will get his only standalone Pokemon Beauty Contest game, which he'll probably love because that's what he's fully into. It becomes like a pageant mom with his Pokemon. Yeah. Hundred percent. You give me a Nidoran that you know wears some nice bows <laughs> on his spikes. I'm in. But if that's what the game is, you know what I mean. Like I don't want. If yeah, don't distract I'm, Mark from his killing. He needs to focus exactly on one it. thing. Yeah, I want my ten year old with a group full of monsters to just kill everything in his path and you know dominate the world and and defeat a criminal organization by himself. After his mom says, "Get out of the house. You're ten. Here's some <laughs> deadly monsters with fire and poison powers. Um, it's time for you to leave. Uh, so that's that's how I want my Pokemon games. But then you have to be able to import those into the Pokemon Prom game or uh, pageant game. If you yes. can't, it's game yeah, over. I need that Pokemon Home synergy for sure. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Very very good. Okay, Mark. Uh, since you haven't been playing Pokemon Pageant, um, yep. what have you been playing? Uh, so I have been playing as usual, whatever Finn tells me to play. And lately that has been either smash brothers or his new obsession. I don't know what kid at daycare talked about creepers, but I'm going to just, <laughs> <sighs> I read a strongly Good word at home to that parent. Um, anyway, it has brought up. Uh, Finn talked about creepers. I've seen some creeper like backpacks and things and Finn was asking about creepers. So we talked about Minecraft and he watched me play a bit of survival mode and has had the funniest reactions ever and has told the creepers that he's proud of them (laughs) every time that they blow me up or kill me. I'm very proud of you creepers for, for doing that. And I'm just like, why? Why is that a thing that you're saying to the creepers? He's like, well, I'm just proud of them. They're doing their job. I'm like, their job is to kill me. He's like, yeah, but you come back. It's okay. (laughs) All right. Okay. That's a weird thing for an almost four-year-old to say. Uh, But so I, you know, and and he'll he'll mine. He was digging and and stuff. And uh, I built a little home in survival mode. But the real... The real kicker was the last couple of days we've been just playing like creative or whatever, the, the free free run mode in that one. And just like going about, I turned the enemies on, uh, but also just turned on like unlimited whatever the hell we want. So like I armored him up. We were playing two player, just like gave him like the best sword and armor in the game, which is like go free, you crazy little goblin. And uh, he's just been going through just wrecking house. It's been amazing. And um, so, you know what? Exactly what you're saying with that vampire game. He's been going off killing all the monsters. I'm building a lakeside cottage. (laughs) It's fantastic. There's windows everywhere. Tons of natural light. It's amazing. Nice hardwood floors, brick sides, uh, big pink dual double doors uh, directly over a lake. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. As soon as I could get the sea turtles to stop crawling through my living room, 
<laughs> and uh, you don't have rats in Canada. You just got sea turtles. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Finn just loves, he flies. He figured out how to fly. Cause you can do that in the creative mode. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, he literally just comes in like Superman with his bow and arrow and glowing armor and just like shoots stuff. That's like, trying to blow up my house and he'll be like halfway across the map. And I'm just like, Finn, there's some like water zombies coming at my house. And he's like, I'll be right there. And he <laughs> flies in. Like he did the superhero landing today in the middle of my house and like comes out with a bow and arrow and just starts like wailing on things that are kind of like coming around. It was the funniest thing. And he loved it. So that's our new, so you thing. need a new roof creative. Uh, yeah, well, I haven't finished the roof. I'm, I'm still working. Oh, good. On the there you go. See, yeah. So he just came. Yeah. He would have come crashing down through the roof, but it was just an amazing, uh, just yeah, straight through just, I'm building up some walls and stuff and he just comes boom, lands behind me. Um, he also thinks it's hilarious when he undoes everything that I've done. So he will come by and just wreck a section of flooring and just laugh his little butthole off. And uh, it's great. It's great. He uh, he loves the Love destruction. It. He loves the construction. He loves the action, the adventure. So Minecraft's a big thing. We're learning about like all the you know the the both sides of it. You know the the survival mode. We tamed a wolf. Um, got some wolf armor going. It's it's been great, man. It's been really good. Um, so he's he's is that the it. is that the Super Mario one that, that has the Super Mario content. I, so I have it on both. Obviously, I do have it on Switch, and and obviously it's included in Game Pass. So we've been actually playing on both because okay. I couldn't figure out the multiplayer on Switch for some reason. It wasn't working for me. It said to turn off the Mario skin, so I turned off. Did the you Mario check skin. your Joy Counts? Yeah, <laughs> play with two Pro controllers. I don't know what to say, man. Uh, it, it said turn off this thing. Make sure you have a Nintendo Switch Online account if you're playing online. I was like, it's just two of us. We're on the same couch. Let me do this. And it was like, you have to turn this toggle on and it wouldn't let me turn the toggle on. So I was like, did you share, did, did you get, fr- did you get Finn's friends code? <laughs> yeah. On the same switch couch co-op. <laughs> Definitely need a friend code for that. Exactly. Uh, Nintendo knows exactly what to do. Um, so if someone that's better at Minecraft can explain how to do that on switch, go nuts. But uh, no, the two player stuff we've been playing mostly, we've been playing all of that on Xbox. And I do have two different survival modes. One is Finn world with a space in between the other was Finn world uh so that's that's the um the two survival modes and then the creative mode is just called finland um finland. so i'm very creative with <laughs> nice. like that yeah uh so that's that's it man we've been we've been playing a ton of minecraft he still loves the creepers he cheered on enderman when uh i went after him <clears throat> um and he teleported away because i was coming and i was i was getting real close to just ending enderman um but uh yeah he's been having a great time with that man and, and i i want him to try to build up some stuff because i want those creative kind of bits too not just the um watching zombies kill dad so it's it's fun um and he got a big kick out of the next game the last game i've been playing is uh is little kitty big city this one's on uh i know it's on switch and it's on game pass mm-hmm. i'm mm-hmm. going to assume it's on playstation as well um, un- I'm not sure. This is just, it's it like a cat simulator so far. Uh, it starts off super cute kind of opening kind of thing, explains the story well enough. And then you just kind of go and you just cause shenanigans as a cat. I'm very early on, but so far I've very much enjoyed just knocking plants over and breaking things. It's not on PlayStation. Todd, just check. Thanks for checking. Um, is this kind of like uh, that Goose Game, the Untitled Goose Game kind of thing, or similar kind of vibes? Yeah, okay. yeah, um, y- yeah. You seem you can you can kind of like trip people. Some people love <laughs> you. There's a painter that had some paints, and he's just kind of staring at his canvas, and you knock the paints over, and then step through everything, and he's just like, "Yeah, that's great." <laughs> Um, and then there's other I love people cats. That like, yeah, yeah. This is, he's, that's a masterpiece. And then there's other people that you trip, and they're like, "I hate you." So <laughs> it's um, it's very entertaining. Yeah, I just I stole someone's sandal, uh, or like a slipper or whatever. Let's just like stole or that, took it up the road. 
um, knocked over every single pot that I have seen so far. It's fantastic. <laughs> I got an achievement for breaking so many pots. Um, it's just good. It seems like it's going to be just dumb fun. You can make the cat meow anytime you want to make it run. You get a little butt wiggle when you go underneath a fence and stuff. Like it's very well animated. It's very, very cute. It's uh, it's good. So I can't wait to play more of that game. And again, Finn really enjoyed watching me play. He was that's cheering cool. on the cat and the crows and everything else. So um, if I can play a game that's entertaining for me and makes him laugh, win-win and that's been the the last couple of weeks of gaming for me nice mark you may be getting a kitty out of this yeah <laughs> that is also a distinct possibility i'm hoping the digital go. kitty uh, takes place of like uh desire for a real kitty be like you know you know they say oh we should get a cat be like no we have yeah. a cat right here it's on yeah. the xbox yeah. yeah exactly keep them away that's from enough. those Nintendo dogs <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's oh enough for now. um yeah yeah. What about you, Todd? What you been playing? God, I've been like, I've been like the, uh, the, the person that's just like scanning things to find out what I really want to play. And it's been frustrating, but good because it kind of feels like I'm, I'm trying to see what else is out there versus the zeitgeist. So, um, I've been playing a lot of games from Gamefly, Gamefly for the old gamers like myself. Um, uh, Outcast 2 was a game I wanted to try because Outcast has a long history basically coming out in like the late 90s. Voxels, this guy was kind of like a, a human that landed on this planet. And it's kind of crazy. Look cool. Not a great game, though. And I even tried like the remaster modern times. Not good. Um, but this is a true sequel. Looks great. Fully voiced. It's But it's like a B tier game where... You definitely can find the fun. Kind of reminds me of like that Evil West game I played where it's really good. But this is like the discount Mass Effect slash uh, I'm trying to think of another game where you're basically um, a human on this planet. The humans are actually the enemies, but the people that are native don't know that because they're all wearing like suits like the bad guys. And this guy essentially has been brought back from the death. He's dead. He's supposed to be kind of like the savior uh, from the, the people that he can do these things and he can talk to their gods, which they call yods, which is just like, okay, that's just dumb. You change one letter. Don't call them yods. Call them something else. The, the hires or something like that. It's so dumb when they say it too. the voice acting is really bad. Oh. <laughs> it's just, and there's a lot of it too, but they're very uh, excited about this dialogue and the things they are talking about. So I'll give them credit for like going full on in, the mechanics are kind of funny. You get like a jetpack, and you can go vertical and go that, and you can update it, and you can basically do it so you you glide through this level. So traversal is very fun. It's I like, really like it. The combat's is, very fun. Is it like Anthem? It kind of reminds me of like Mass Effect plus Anthem, but if it was done by like, I'm trying to think of a studio, Namco Band, maybe like a Team Ninja. Okay. So it's like somebody that has cool mechanics, but bad, like storytelling, voice <laughs> acting makes no sense. Um, and like a lot of extra stuff that doesn't make sense. A lot of fetch quests. This game is for somebody. I liked it, but I kind of felt like I kept on getting bogged down into things I didn't really want to be doing. I'm talking to too many people. I'm given too many things and like, even they have a really cool like glossary button, which I think is funny. Yet R two, it tells you what these things mean because they are literally giving you tons of phrases and things and names, and, and it's like, holy crap! Um, what am I supposed to do? Oh yeah, I'm trying to get back to my own place, but I got to do this. And like one of my levels, I have to, and then you have to get the trust of every of every village, and it's very much like almost like Avatar in a lot of ways too, where it's like very. Uh, the, the people are in tune with nature, but you have to get like fruit, but it's way up in the clouds. You get it and you get one. You're like, no, I need 20 more of those. I'm like, <laughs> I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> I don't oh, like your no. busy work. <laughs> this is, the, I'm not like a gig worker to get your fruit. So um, I think there's something there. I just felt like they felt like we've got to put a lot of content in this and the content is kind of filler. So, but I do like what they bring forward when I'm actually doing the cool stuff, I actually enjoy it. It's just, I feel like there's just not enough cool stuff to actually keep me engaged. So, but 
why not? If it's free, I feel like this is the perfect game for like a uh, a, a Game Pass or mm-hmm. a PlayStation Plus, and I hope it comes there because I don't think it's worth seventy bucks. Um, which then led me to Sandland, which I've talked about this game before, not on this podcast, but um, this game is a lot of fun. But once again, it's a big game, lots of things to do. And I really wanted a more core experience, but this is um, a game from a Toriyama who made Dragon Ball Z. He's made a lot of other things. He does art for um, Dragon uh, for uh, Dragon. Uh, no, um, yeah, Dragon, Dragon Quest. Quest. Yeah. So, and he just passed away. And this is an, a new anime series, which I think is on Prime or Netflix. Chris, you may have even heard me talk about this mm-hmm. on a certain podcast with luke lore um so i won't go into details except the fact is this is a cool game it's 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 an action adventure game where you're basically demons you live in this world called Sandland. there's a drought and the humans are there with the demons and they're trying to coexist and essentially as the son of the demon king uh you have to partner with this human sheriff to find a new source of water um and they introduce tank combat to take on like the evil government but it's cartoonish it's goofy but it's very fun and the 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 love the it's very it's got a lot of levity to it i really like it and it looks exactly like the anime um it's fun so i think there's something there too but once again i just feel like i'm on a lot of fetch quests a lot of things where i feel like this is a filler game perfect for somebody has a lot more time but not not for me but it, it is a game i think that I think a lot of people will enjoy, especially anime fans, but it's fully vo- voiced and it looks great and it controls pretty well. So I uh, like the game, but just not for me to stick with it for like 40 hours. Um, a game that won't require 40 hours, but is fun is also available on at least game pass for all I know, but I think it's on other services that you pay for, which is another crab's treasure, which is a super cute, uh, cartoonish, lots of puns, souls like mm-hmm. action combat you die a lot you get your gear you go in but uh and it's fun because it uses like puns aplenty like a land shark which is a basically like have you ever seen that like little those little hand puppets or the puppets <laughs> on a stick and you like you this and it talks it's one of those but it's a shark and it's a basically a lone shark and he takes your your shell and you watch your money back. So that's where you start. You end up being a very defenseless little crab and you get a, you eventually get a um, fork that you find in the sea and you can defend yourself. But there's a lot of like sea crap in the sea too, like bottles and just like junk. There's cigarette butts everywhere. <laughs> it looks, it's like a little, a little mermaid after a bender yeah. is probably the best way to put it <laughs> under the sea. Her thing, thing about Bob, as she would say is, is been littered, but basically that's your mission. And it's, it's very much follow the path though, because if you don't follow the path, you're going to find like the souls lore souls, like boss from hell who you are not ready to take care of and he's like full on evil but he's kind of goofy and funny looking too so but it's so bright and cheery it's fun but i'm not one of these guys that loves these type of games it's and there is a easy mode though mark where you pull out a gun (laughs) and you just start killing things so you can do that if you want so i like that they involve crabs in real life then Mm -hmm. correct because, you know, we've had like a, a crab assance with all these games. There's that crab fight game. Yep. There's a bunch of these games under the sea where the crabs are really just the the coolest cats under the sea. So um, if you're interested, check it on Game Pass. You probably have it. I did. My son went hell's deep into it because he loves those action comic games with Perry and, and Roll. So he's all into it. But uh, yeah, that's eventually that's, everything will be crabs. It's a uh, cur- cursonization. Is I think so. Right? Well, we had crab people on South Park, right? Crab people, right? Remember, yeah. they were masquerading as humans on South Park. Yeah. <laughs> Crystal's like, what is Todd talking about? I, I, it's been so long since I watched a South Park episode. I'm like, have you guys ever? Oh, seen it's like an old a, one. It's the old ones. Yeah. Like that evolutionary theory, though. Like the like cur- carcinization. I think it's it's like everything. Event- like crabs have evolved independently in in across like multiple species. Um, Crabs have evolved several times. Like everything eventually kind of becomes a crab. Uh, it's really weird. Uh, look it up. It's a weird rabbit hole to go down. 
Um, kind of like cockroaches will be the only thing living on the land. Crabs will be the only thing living on the sea. <laughs> yeah. And then they'll yeah. form and they'll be, they'll make uh, crab roaches. And yeah, yeah, the world will become a better place. Yeah. Definitely. So uh, make sure you tell Finn that at night. Do Son, it. when, when, when the, the crab people and the roaches come together, yeah. um, make sure you respect them. Obviously. Yeah. Chris, what kind of bedtime uh, tales did you no, tell I'm your sure. kid? Exactly. Chris, uh, Make sure you prepare your kids. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Like you know, because you know, it's, it's summer, or, or you know, it's it's turning to summer, so like bugs are coming in more often, and all that stuff. We have to deal with that, and like I have to go and kill them all the time. I'm like, no, I'm done doing that. It's your turn. I need you to no. deal with this now, and they won't deal. Like, it's like. But the, I was so afraid of bees. This Holy past crap. week, they've been better. They've been better. They've been trying to take care of themselves. So I'm like, good, yeah, cool, excellent. So, what have you given them weapons? Because I think that might be key. Your your hand. You're 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 sending the kids out into the world to fight <laughs> animals, but you you haven't given them a this Pokemon. To this battle is a with. Spartan life, all right. You but know they, they had to figure it out. <laughs> they had to like just. Yeah, I go full video game. I'm like, you know, it's dangerous to go alone. Take yeah. this, yeah, or something. You know, you gotta, you gotta give your kids. Uh, you gotta prepare them. Get, get yeah. some weapons in here. One of those little yeah, salt just get one blasters. of those, uh, <laughs> uh, one of those vacuum cleaners. The the vacuums yeah, that work. suck up um, the bugs. Okay. Or the, Apparently, uh, you just need it. Rackets that electrocute. Oh yeah, things. we have that, but yeah, I don't want to give it to them because then they would be beating each other with it. So that's that's or you just from what I've seen, I've seen life. Exactly. I mean, you're right. You're right. I'm trying to like Spartan life with guardrails. You're right. You're right. But it is. Okay, right. Okay. Right. Yeah, all right, all right. Well, well, the other video I saw that people are taking like jars of gasoline and putting it uh, under uh, oh, hornet's nest. Yes. So your kids are small. They can probably climb up the ladder really well. And apparently the, the, the nest just comes off and it kills them all. So, you know, pro tips, kids. Hey, you know, your parents can't kill bugs for you ever. Get your right. bottles of gasoline, your your salt rifles. Siphon and, it out, uh, of the, out of your gas can. Exactly. exactly. You're, fine. You're fine. You know what? Do your part. <laughs> you know, <laughs> pull your own way, kids. Yeah. So uh, moving on to my last game, which is a game that's actually coming to Game Pass, uh, I believe, this month, which is yeah. Immortals of a- Avium. I bought it for like super cheap for like eight bucks. Um, it's an EA Partners game. I think it's because it's on EA Play that it's coming to Game Pass yeah. now because it's been like six months. Um, this game looks beautiful. This is essentially a futuristic uh, world. Uh, these people are kind of the de- the under uh, basically underserved masses, and they have magic class, but they're basically drafted into the military, and um, it, it, and uh, quite honestly. I haven't gotten very far into it, but I really love the gra- the the the, uh, the engine is using Unreal Engine Five. It's a beautiful game. Um, it's definitely into that mode I love, and I think this is a game I'm going to really glom onto uh, because it really feels like a condensed, focused adventure with really cool power types, and uh, it's first person. And oh. the game is beautiful, and I do like the combat. And I yeah. like the story it's telling. It's got um, uh, a lot of famous a voice, couple, uh, actors, right? Exactly. A lot of yeah. famous voices. Um, uh, I can't remember her name from Firefly. Um, yes. Gina, Washes, Gina, uh, Gina Torres. Gina Torres, yes. Yep, she's in it. There's a bunch of other names, too. And I think this game is a show case of the modern gen te- technology, which is kind of sad because this game just got launched when everything else was launching last year. So it's kind of forgotten. I'm glad I bought it. I bought the deluxe edition for eight bucks. So I get all the extra stuff, yeah. but um, I'm really digging it. It's beautiful. It's, it's amazing. It just kind of feels like this is what this gen should look like, but we're still hemmed in by the old tech, the, the cross gen game. So um, morals of avium, check it out. I think you might like it, but it's going to be one of those. It's basically using like a special ability with magic in one hand, uh, and then basically a melee or another magic s- uh, skill on the other. So kind of like a Skyrim or almost like a Bioshock feel, but you're in this cool world. It's very immersive and really high values. They spent a lot of money on the game. So cool. I check know. it out. And then the studio closed down, right? Did the studio close I down? Know. Well, they drained the studio of talent. So maybe not completely closed, but yeah, pretty much. It is a shame. Well, that's what I've been playing. So you know what? We're ready to do less important things now. 
uh, which one involves an ad. So please listen. Hey, Secret Friends Unite, let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So, if you're interested in making an easy, high quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Now it's time for the news. So uh, we've had a lot of crazy news happen. A lot of it has not been very positive. And because we're Xbox centric this week, um, and because X, you know Chris covers Xbox quite a bit on uh, with Game Pass, and Mark has an Xbox system, I do as well. We thought we'd touch on this. So uh, the big news this week, or, or the previous week was Xbox announced that it is closing uh, two of its largest studios from Bethesda. It's also... Um, um, closing one of its mobile studios, Alpha Dog, and then it is also taking one of its mobile studios, Roundhouse Games, and it's going to be converting that to Zenimax Online Studios. Um, Arcane Austin is closing. Games you may know of them are um, Prey, and then the most recent was Redfall. They also worked on Dishonored. Uh, Tango Gameworks is the other school studio that's fully closing. Uh, they worked on um, Ghostwire Tokyo that just came out on Xbox. It was a PlayStation exclusive. And they um, just published Hi-Fi Rush, which uh, was many uh, had was in the category for Game of the War, Game of the Year awards, and was just put out on uh, PlayStation consoles as well. Um, this comes amid, uh, you know, obviously Xbox is now a different type of studio. It has acquired all of ABK Studios, and it acquired the Bethesda Studios in 2021 um, as part of a seven billion dollar deal. Um, so with that, uh, part of the rationale was they needed to uh, take resources and focus on their biggest IP, specifically at Bethesda, which is going to be your Elder Scrolls, uh, Fallout games, Doom, and Skyrim, and Starfield. So those are the type of the games we're talking about primarily. Um, and then uh, the other part was they wanted to also focus on games that are smaller and award-worthy. So um, that is the kind of the lay of the land now with Xbox where they had, I think it was at one time they had with, after all these studios, they were going to have close to 36 studios. Um, so now this brings that number down a little bit lower, like by four. So with that, um, Chris, since you use a lot of the game pass, a lot of those games uh, are, are that are coming to game pass, were coming from the studios. What's your take on all this? Um. Well, Hi-Fi Rush was definitely one of my games of the year in 2023. So it was definitely a shock to see um, that, you know, yeah, I, I guess in a way Microsoft just kind of, or Xbox kind of did, did like literally shadow drop this during a, uh, you know, one of their developer directs and stuff like that. And, and then 
you know, I was blown away by it. And it was like, you know, 2020, like it, it started off 2023 with a bang and I thought it was, it was great. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate to see the studio get shuttered and, and especially when they were, they just started to try and make it multi-platform. Like it was yeah. it's kind of an odd thing to do, but uh, look, I, I, at the end of the day, I, I think Todd, you and I had kind of talked about this offline a little bit. It just, there, there had to be something else in the background that had to happen. I, I feel like it's almost like a logistical thing. They're literally the only studio that they manage in Japan, if I'm correct. So yes. it's like, are they just kind of circling the wagons here? And they're just being like, let's focus on the, the stuff that's in North America, Europe, and just try to try to try to just like double down on that. I know that they've tried, they've been trying, Xbox has been trying so hard to make a, and make some sort of leeway into the Japan market, but I don't think it's happening. It's just, it's just not. And they're, I think they're just like, you know what, let's focus here and let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. I, I really do wish that they were, they did something like what they did for toys for Bob, where they allowed them to become independent or not. But you know, um, maybe it's the possibility that they just didn't have the, they didn't have the infrastructure infrastructure to manage being going independent or whatnot. I don't know. So it's unfortunate and it's part of it. Like, and there might be some redundancy who knows? Like I, like I really do want, I, there, there's going to, this is obviously very crappy that this happened. Obviously you hate to see people lose their jobs, especially this, this gives, and like, People have talked about this ad ad nauseum on Twitter and, and all social media platforms about like how the optics look about this, right? Like you you make a great game and you're getting shut down. So like who wants to be a part of the Xbox family or whatever you want to call it, right? Because they they just look at that as not being su- successful or whatever. It's a numbers game for them. And they're a big company. They're the, there's a reason why they're a big company, right? They have to make these tough decisions. So I don't know. I, I, I'm hoping that the, the, this short term pain will will really will really allow them to grow and allow even even just the Activision studios have been like constantly just only working on Call of Duty to go, do like really cool little game like the shorter games that we're talking about too. Like I I want those shorter cooler experiences like that too, and not just Call of Duty season forty five. I don't care about that. I don't. No offense to anyone that, that that likes those games, but it's like you know, there, there's a lot of talented studios there that can do some really cool stuff. So I'm trying to trying, trying to think of the positive here. So we'll see. What's your take? Pretty much the same. Um, that's exactly. We've talked about some some different shutdowns over the past few years. That it's always the same kind of thing. It always sucks when people lose their jobs and. Studios get shuttered, um, you know, and there's there's always some talent in any studio, but especially when it's a, a studio that popped out a fantastic game like this. Yeah. And then you have Microsoft saying, like, we want to focus on smaller games and games that will win us an award. And it's like, they just they just did yeah. this. This was up for awards. What are you talking about? Like, the, I think the the logistics of or the, the marketing or messaging or whatever – from that, like, this is a drop. This is a fumble on Microsoft's part, not only for the like shutting down the studios. And like Chris said, there's got to be some reasoning behind it. They're a big company. You think with all these acquisitions, anyone who thought with or who saw Microsoft doing all these acquisitions the last few years, <clears throat> if you thought these were all going to happen and no studio was going to get right. shut down. No person was going to leave their job. Um, you know, like y- you, you have not seen many corporate <laughs> <laughs> acquisitions and that kind of, you know, yeah. like there's always those redundancies. There's always those things that it's like, okay, well we don't need 16 people having the exact same job that can be done by eight. We, right. it sucks, but we have to let some people go. Um, and that always sucks. It does. But like, again, there's these corporations, like that's what they do. Like you have to kind of almost expect it. You don't want it, but you expect it. Um, But the messaging part of thing, it's like, guys, come on. Yeah. It's just like, it's, it sucks because 
yeah, they like you. You feel like they did. They did good in terms of, um, make like kind of get, shining a positive life uh, a light on Xbox, and then, but then on the flip side, like this is going to be three four three has not been doing very well. Why have they not been shut down, or why have yeah. they not been reduced, or whatever the case may be? You know, right? There, there are a lot of other yeah. studios that just haven't been hitting the mark, and. Yeah, like it's it's that that total like I, I don't know. It just seemed very strange. But I, yeah. but again, these are all Bethesda studios, so that's why I'm like, yeah. is there something where it's like Bethesda? Like, do they do they fuzzy the numbers a bit before the acquisition and be like, oh hey, you know, by the way, we're actually in the red this much more. And it's like, oh right, God. so we, right. we had to like force their hand. There's, kind of thing. there's always those internal kind of conversations and things that happen, like you said, like some, some botched numbers or this or that or whatever, or it's just like, they just straight up just weren't selling the games. Like there were yeah. certain things that made money and the rest of it was a loss. Like right. there could be all of those kind of things that come into play and it sucks no matter what, but like, hopefully, hopefully in a few years, we will see a streamlined Microsoft yeah. that is releasing some like award-winning bangers that, like you know have that same kind of pedigree because let's i'm an xbox fan but like admittedly their games are nowhere near that same kind of pedigree of anything that sony's putting out you know we don't have like a Mm spider-man um a god of war like these big massive games with like impactful heartfelt deep stories that like grip you in like we've gotten a shitty halo game and (laughs) like comparatively, you know what I mean? Like everyone was kind of expecting like the God of war remake version of like master chief story to like really hit and just be like even breath of the wild style of like, let's do that. But with halo and it just kind of like, I just watched Iron Man two recently and it was, you know, like the ex wife or whatever. Like you think this is the most badass missile ever made. It's going to reduce everything. And it just kind of like farts in the water. And it's like, <laughs> shit, man, that is so much of what Xbox has been popping out this, yeah. this generation. Yeah. Um, Although I'm, again, I, I will say know, obsidian like, though, they've been, they've been popping out just, just nice little hits like I, yeah. they, oh, yeah. they're just they're like they're jabs but they're not knockouts they're not like yeah so. oh there, there's definitely some exceptions don't yeah. get me wrong but like you know i think microsoft has a lot to figure out and mm-hmm. i maybe these are steps i'm hoping in a good direction it sucks right now but hopefully the end will be a more streamlined microsoft that has their student like you said it could even be a logistics like someone needs to be overseeing these studios and keep them on track. And if something's like at the opposite end of the spectrum or the world or whatever, or just doesn't jive with like how they manage things, like mm-hmm. this could be any number of things and all the reasoning sucks for anybody that's affected. But like, you know, hopefully some good will come maybe, I don't know, but right now it just kind of, it just sucks. Yeah, and the messaging is so off. It's so bad. It's a fumble. <laughs> So bad. Yeah. Um, I think part of this is um, my, Xbox as a part of Microsoft's portfolio of companies. You think of like they own LinkedIn, they own yeah. servers, they own Office, they own Windows and things like that. Xbox has been essentially just the smallest little guy in the side. And he maybe contributes a little bit of profit and adds a little bit of character and presence that is not, you know, PowerPoint. Perfect. But, and and the reason why Bethesda hasn't been a big deal, because it was $7 billion. Not a big deal. For Microsoft, they are $3 trillion. You add in $69 billion from ABK, um, Satya Nutella, their CFO, CEO, now expects Xbox to be a bigger part of uh, Microsoft as a whole. Mm-hmm. And the scrutiny is there, because they have to now show, well... Your business isn't very healthy because if you, we didn't bring an ABK last year, your business would have been down. But with ABK, we're up. So what are you going to do to make your business more profitable? Unfortunately, one of the first things they can do is reduce people. Yeah. That adds more profit because basically you're spending less money. Uh, also, it's been three years since Bethesda was purchased. A lot of the people at Bethesda are 
have scooted out. A lot of leadership is gone. The leader of Tango is gone. So three years later, now they can start making some of these moves. And the way I'm feeling it, some of the things they talk about smaller games that make awards. Well, we had one studio that do that is now gone. Um, and then I heard another, you know, studios, basically another head, I think it was um, Matt Booty, who's head of like the games area of Xbox, basically said, we need to put resources against our biggest, most impactful IPs. If you're at Bethesda, that's going to be Fallout, yeah. Skyrim, and it's going to be those games, especially after Fallout was the biggest thing on Prime. And the best thing they can offer is a, what, four-year, a six-year-old Fallout 4 and maybe a, a Fallout 76, which is... You know, it's in a better space, but it's not the game they would want. It's not like a remastered Last of Us 2, which is brand new, and you can follow the show. So yeah. a lot of this is kind of telling to say they want to be, and this this is where I'm worried, that I think there's going to be more ABK influence on Microsoft than there is anything else, which means we need to put more resources against our big studios like ABK do with Call of Duty. How many of those studios at ABK went to be support studios? for call of duty. And that's not a good thing for the, the industry because ABK went from being doing a lot of stuff to call of duty, maybe guitar hero until that died. Maybe we try something like a Sekiro and that's about it. And then maybe toys for Bob could make uh, toys for Bob could make a, uh, a Spyro or a crash game and then toys for Bob's out. So that's the worry I have that they realize the model they've been doing with less uh, oversight do your own, keep your own culture, obviously hasn't performed as we've talked about this. Studios are not meeting dates. Games are taking forever. I mean, can we wait another nine years for another Halo? Can we wait another, you know, this many years for this game? Uh, you know, State of Decay 3 was announced like four years ago. Nobody knows when that game's coming out. It hasn't been seen. Um, so I, and the only games that are really thriving are the Forza Horizon series games and COD. The rest is kind of like, yeah, it's good. Maybe we haven't. Maybe we'll get a Gears game every seven years too. So I think a lot of this is writing on the wall. They want Xbox to be a more efficient uh, game studio and profit generator, which is not great for the games we've been getting, especially Obsidian, which we talked about. Obsidian, they're their most like I would say reliable studio yeah, at this point. Hundred percent, but. I don't know if we'll get another Pentiment. I don't know if we'll get another, you know, we're going to get Outer Worlds coming through. So I don't know if we're going to see a lot of these little experiments. Mm. And I worry for a studio like Hellblade, you know, like uh, Ninja Theory, that since they've been under Xbox, they put up Bleeding Edge, which was a fart in the wind, didn't (laughs) exist. Um, They put, they've worked six years on Hellblade 2, and it's launching in less than a week now. Yeah. And there's zero advertising for it. Yeah. And they say it's a smaller game and everything like that. But I've got to imagine they put more resources and money in the hi fi rush than that game. And they're not, yeah. and they're not, that's not going to grow Game Pass. They're not going to even sell physical copies. So yeah. if you don't own an Xbox or a PC, how are you getting that game if you go to retail? So I do worry that um, unless you're like the biggest thing in the world at Xbox, they may not contribute to that marketplace. So I'm really curious to see where this all goes. But it's not good news. Um, Xbox has a history of killing a lot of studios, uh, erroneously, not under this leadership, but I do worry about Phil and his team, especially as when Sarah Bond was being interviewed by Bloomberg. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw the interview. Yeah. But essentially, she's been promoted. She is now the head of Xbox for their platforms and hardware. Um and didn't even address the fact when they asked her point blank, what about all these studio closures? And she talked about studio culture and all those things, and I'm like <laughs> well, if you're yes. talking about studio culture, what is the what is your rationale for killing those suits? She didn't answer the question. No. And people are saying, well, you know, she's not used to something like, yeah, she's used to talking to the fans that are happy and she's telling them all these things yeah. about great things. When you're talking to investors and you're talking about that environment and you can't answer that question, that doesn't build a lot of influence. So I worry about this Xbox leadership team uh, that they may not be long because Phil's been around for 10 years. And if you I mean, haven't changed your position in the marketplace in 10 years, I mean, most CEOs and there's don't last that long. I work for a big corporate company and we change C- CEOs probably every five to seven years. Oh, wow. Uh, and business heads don't last 10 years. Um, so I, I worry for Xbox, but they have a lot of talented people, a lot of studios. And um, Game Pass is a great thing, but um, 
that will lead us to where we're going. So any final words, I mean, uh, on where, where this is at, I mean, um, I, yeah, I think I, I think I, um, read this or, or someone, someone mentioned this before, uh, you know, Xbox has been very, like their leadership team has been pretty vocal. They've been like, they've been trying to like interact with the community. Like you don't really see that as much on the Sony side of things or, even like Nintendo, Nintendo like has their little um, directs and stuff like that. But I don't, I don't, I don't know. And correct me if I'm wrong. They do any sort of interaction with with the fans yeah. as, as much. So it's it's a double edged sword, right? Because because they're so close to your fans and stuff like that, then to do this to them, it feels like it's it's even more of a, uh, yeah. a like a personal cut. You know, because yeah, they they come off as like we're gamers too. We love gaming. Yeah. So when they act like your friend or like fellow gamers, right? But then they do something very businessy. Yeah. Not only very businessy, but also just like we've said, completely drop the ball on the messaging, the PR, yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, you're not only like corporate stooges, but like you're also full of shit corporate yeah. stooges who just got caught not being able to talk about like the recent closures and right. trying to spin it in a way that we're seeing straight through. So what else is fake? Do right. you play games? Do you like this? And you know, like that's that's frustrating and heartbreaking for people who are like, yeah, Phil's a gamer. He's a fellow gamer. And like when he or his team get caught in something like this, it's like, oh, no, you wear an Xbox or like a Banjo Kazooie shirt, but like you're wearing a suit. Like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just like yeah. it's that kind of like fake bullshit, and it it feels more impactful because Sony's like, no, nah, we're wearing suits, and we're straight up going to tell you we wear suits, yeah. and we're going to act like we wear suits. Like Jim Ryan, nobody liked him, and we were okay with that because yeah. we could make fun of him and not realize that he would tell us Vib Runners is his favorite game. Yeah, right? Like Jumping Flash. Yeah. And like since Reggie left, like Nintendo's kind of the same deal, right? Like they like you said, they have a little bit of personality in those directs, but like they're never they're never as personable as as like Phil or the Xbox team try to be. Hmm. Um so it is more impactful when they yeah. seem like your buddies. Yeah. And I mean quite honestly, Microsoft, I, I get it because Xbox is a brand that's their brand that's really the most consumer facing. I think they have enjoyed that when it was okay to stumble. Hey, we're with you. We're going to back you. Now it's going to be like hard decisions, tough things. And when they've talked to their fans, their fans are going to feel a little bit left out. And I, I totally get that. There's a passionate Xbox community. And I I appreciate that because I when I look at Sony, I love them despite all of the ridiculousness and Xbox fans are like, I love them and they're going to make things better. And I kind of feel like at this point, um, you know, and I've also heard like, Oh, Phil Spencer didn't make these decisions with leadership. Phil is, is making the decision for Xbox. We have CEOs and companies. Um, if, if Satya Nadella is doing the job and telling Jim Ryan exactly what to do with video games without his background, we're screwed more than anything else because the guy that, uh, you know, likes servers and subscriptions for PowerPoint is telling them how to make profits in gaming. Yeah. That's not a good look. It's Phil making the decisions on how to make his business profitable. He doesn't like the decisions. He's a human being, of course, but he's the one that's making the decisions telling Satya, this is how we're going to hit our profits for Xbox because mm -hmm. every division owns that. It's kind of like the LinkedIn guy at Microsoft isn't asking Sadia how to get more bad emails to LinkedIn and tell people to sell you services on LinkedIn. We've all dealt with that. But once again, Xbox is LinkedIn, is servers. It's yeah. all part of their process. And every president of those parts owns their business. They make the decisions to make the profits. Phil owns that. And if people disagree and thinks he's like, you're, you're confusing yourself like Jim Ryan. And what is this? Uh, Furukawa is the, the Nintendo president. All Furukawa does is drops a Twitter handle and says, this is Furukawa. We're getting no new Switch. We're getting a direct in June. Peace out. That's what he says. That's <laughs> yeah. all you're here from him for a month. Yeah. 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 So that's where we're at with Xbox. This is the horrible stuff. But the good news is 
we're going to have some good stuff happening at the Xbox Showcase and Redacted Showcase, which mm-hmm. is so strange as we get to the bonus round. Um, so uh, if you don't know this, right now we're looking at the Summer of Games. E3 no longer exists. E3 ESA said we're out. Peace out. Don't ask for us to come back because we can't do it. Uh, so instead of that, we're getting uh, essentially the Summer of Games happening starting June 7th. We have the Summer Game Fest, Day of the Devs, Accessibility Showcase. June 8th, Wholesome Direct, then the Future Game Show Summer Showcase, which if you told me what that was, I wouldn't even know what it is, who does it, who Future is, I don't know. (laughs) June 9th, (laughs) Xbox Game Showcase and Redacted Direct, which I love because, you know, it's a secret. Uh, June 10th, Ubisoft Forward, and then the events that are TBA, are the Nintendo June Direct and PC Gaming Showcase. So if you look at this gentleman, essentially everything is still happening within four days. So that's still not bad is compared to what E3 something? was, which was like two to three days. Yeah. Sorry, is is Devolver doing something as well? or uh, Not announced yet, mm-hmm. and I don't know if they will. I don't know. They've done things in the past where they just drop it and okay. it's goofy and fun. Yeah. Um, and then we're hearing rumors that sh- Sony may drop a showcase in May. Uh, so that's kind of oh, wow. what we've got in the past, um, except for yeah. Sony playing their own game. So with that, um, we've heard some rumors and things with that. Um, last year, Xbox did a showcase where they would uh, allow people to buy tickets, go to their local theater and watch. I did that with Sean Nias last year. Right. I haven't heard anything about that. They are going to have a um, presence in L.A. Luke Laura's going to that. Some other people are going to that where they're going to meet. Giant Bomb's having their thing. So that's what's going on. But beyond right now, it's just going to be a um, digital presence. No real people on a stage, from my understand. Oh, wow. So um, the way we've done predictions in the past has been three key things. What you expect to see, what you want to see, and what you don't want to see. So for Xbox Showcase and the Redacted, which, can we just all be real that's the call of duty game yeah. right yeah, yeah. following kind of like with the skyrim or the the starfield showcase last year was starfield. following yeah. last year yeah exactly so unless somebody has an idea what else redacted could be yeah it's that i mean they could really come out swinging and do something different with like again one of their big franchises gears of war would be probably my top choice Halo something, but like I, I don't see them doing anything with Halo. So like Gears of War, maybe, maybe if they have a surprise, but it's Call of Duty. Yeah. But like I would like it to be something else. It's Black Ops, it's right? Because everything's redacted in the documents. We we can't <laughs> yeah. say anything. It's Cold yeah. War. We're all the 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 documents have been redacted for that. So yeah. let's just say it's going to be that Xbox owns ABK now. They own Call of Duty. They're oh. going all in, and quite honestly. I don't know what they're going to do with like a half hour of Call of Duty. Starfield, sure. Tell us what the hell the game is finally and take us a half hour into it. But with a Call of Duty Black Ops game, which I've heard is going to be like um, Desert War era, like kind of like uh, uh, Gulf War, kind of like early 90s, that area era. Um, Maybe that's the first question. What what could Xbox do to fill up like a full showcase of just Call of Duty? I mean, didn't Activision do that already? Like when they did do their showcases, wouldn't didn't Call of Duty have its own kind of section? Or am I mistaken for that? I think they would just show up at like a PlayStation or Xbox okay. and tell you we're gonna do a playthrough. Hey, uh, 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 Guy on my left, I'm going in. I'm crawling down. I'm rappelling down. Right, right. There's Russians. Let's kill them. Yeah. And that's kind of how it was. That's it. Like, showcase is so vague that it can be that. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this will be – is this going to be the first – or potentially could this be the first, like, not cross-generational Call of Duty was the oh, last really? one? Cross-gen? I don't know. I have no idea. I will look it up. Keep talking. Um, so if, if it's not, like, I wonder if they could show more of that. I remember them talking about, like, the ray tracing and different lighting abilities on newer consoles and what that unlocked before. I wonder if they don't have to worry about 
the last generation of consoles, like, can they push that even further? Can they really make that a thing and, and focus on like those big improvements and, you know, the, maybe something like that, or maybe like the game coming. Yeah. See, call, call, call of duty, modern warfare three was on PS4 and Xbox one. So I'm wondering if this, like, could they say this is the first Call of Duty game that is only on Xbox Series and PlayStation 5. It is only on new. And here's the improvements. 15, 20 minutes of that, 10 minutes of gameplay, story, whatever. Like, there could be improvements. Or like even 10 minutes of that, 10 minutes of gameplay, story, 10 minutes of like, you know, like multiplayer or something like that. I'm just wondering if they're going to throw in like, because I I know – uh, Todd, you like Luke has been playing COD on mobile, mm. so I wonder if they're gonna throw that. Is it in. the it was at the uh, the uh, War, modern warfare or the uh, Warfield or Warzone? One of those, called? yeah, one of those, whatever. But it like there, there's Warzone, they're gonna Warzone, maybe, maybe give that, maybe yeah. they'll throw in a card game or uh, you know, <laughs> some other nonsense like in there. I don't know, they'll, they'll Velatros in yeah. Call of Duty now, <laughs> they also. <laughs> said that they're doing call of duty for switch didn't they oh they said it would be there mark so i if they try to put on the current switch that could be painful yeah um but they may say hey all of the old um black ops games that were on ps i don't know ps what ps4 i don't know where they were on those games will be in a collection on switch not this game. Hopefully, that would be that would be horrible. <laughs> and again, that's what I mean. Like this is it's so vague. Like showcase is so vague. Yeah. Redacted to show it could be Call of Duty blank, just the showcase for the next game, or it could be all over Call of Duty. Here's what we're doing now that Microsoft owns this. Here's the yeah. new game. Here's the one on Switch. Here's the one on mobile. Here's a Call of Duty TV show or movie or something that they're developing with Amazon. Like this could be a whole bunch of shit that we don't really know about. Yeah, that's all combined into a half hour. Or it could be a half hour about like, hey, look at the shadows that this one blade of grass makes um, <coughs> as you, you know, shoot enemies in Warzone that you don't take two seconds to stand still. But this exists because there's a ladybug on the blade of grass, and the ladybug has a complex backstory that you'll never need to know. But uh, that's what we can do with this new generation of hardware. Like that kind of bullshit that they do in like Forza games as you're blowing past these blades of grass at 400 miles an hour. Yeah, I mean, at least I'm, what I'm hoping, I, I was not impressed by the campaign from Modern Warfare 3 last year. They went to more of an open world. Um, it did feel like more of a war zone where you dropped in and you do these things. You get you get power-ups and things like that. Um, I'm hoping it's more of a true campaign this year. So they go more into that. That's really going to focus. But they're going to talk about, oh, by the way, all the maps from this and from the previous iterations are now in our um, online version. Because that was the big thing I think people are talking about, like, well, if we're doing this again, what maps are going to be where? Because that's a big thing with like the COD mobile community is the maps in an introduction, like the weapons and the skins and how do they play. Uh, Warzone's a big deal on mobile. It's a huge, com- you know, a big component of it. So I'm guessing they're probably going to go all in and explaining that stuff. But what I truly hope it is a true campaign, the ones we everybody loves, but, you know, I only play and I don't play the multiplayer. So for those of us who only like the campaign and the roller coaster, I hope it's there. Cause if it's more of what they did last year, I'm out. And I'm like, um, one other question. This is all swirling. Will call of duty, the new game be on game pass day one. Yep. Oof. That would be interesting. I mean, I would I would think so. I would like it to be. So then I would I would then give Call of Duty another try, but otherwise, um, yeah. There's there's rumors that Game Pass is getting another bump in here, cost or just another price, price increase. Another price increase. Um, with studio closures, Microsoft has two problems. One is like the public image that we've already talked about. Two mm-hmm. is if they're closing studios, that means like. Again, they're trying to cut some costs. They're trying to do something. I think if 
Game Pass is their option of like, this is going to be how we make money. This is a recurring subscription. This is how we're doing. They've shut down those like stackable kind of things for a lot of it. Like they're really trying to make it to like, you pay your price, you pay this, you get Call of Duty. If they're doing a price increase, I don't think there's a way to do that right now with the library that they have without adding some of these things. And I think Call of Duty is a big no brainer for people to say, Hey, here's the holidays, get your game pass subscription, get a year of game pass, get this, get it, whatever call of duties included this time. Like Mm -hmm. it makes so much sense logistically and from a PR marketing standpoint, because right now they need it um, that I can't see, I can't see them not doing that, man. It's, it's just, it would absolutely blow my mind if they didn't, they need to do something and something drastic, I think. Yeah, and these recent closures and news is, is showing that they need to do something drastic. That's true. Yeah. Um, the interesting part will be uh, when Call of Duty drops. Activision and ABK earnings were part of Xbox during the last Call of Duty drop. Huge infusion of cash and money into Xbox. Year two, though, you're lapping that. Um, if it's on Game Pass now, uh, obviously you potentially lose all of well a huge part of the xbox fans you might bring in the pc audience who has game pass and says i'm not going to buy it because i've got game pass um so you may lose that but if they think like you said mark increase their cost um they basically really get hardcore to say call of duty is on game pass people buy more xboxes people buy game pass they jump in and the worst case scenario is a lot of people still buy it on PC and PlayStation full bore. Um, maybe it's a win-win. And especially if people stick around, hey, I bought the Game Pass and I forgot to turn off my subscription or stick with it. That's what Xbox wants. So maybe there's an offset. And I hope that happens because I know I won't do it, but um, I've already subscribed for because I stacked. I'm one of those horrible people, Mark, <laughs> I that I have like I two more years or whatever. I've got it. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm already a sunk cost for Microsoft. But if they get people in, yeah. I think that's a win-win. And um, if they can find some way to address the streaming audience that doesn't cost you 15 bucks, and you have to be on Game Pass Ultimate and they can buy get people that don't have a console to play Call of Duty and get that, I think that's a win-win too, but that's reliant on Xbox to say, how do I play this mm-hmm. if I don't own a console or a PC right. and I get the full on Call of Duty experience. And like the Call of Duty is such a perfect game for this because they make so much money or they can make so much money on the DLC stuff, on yeah. Warzone packs, Skins. on cosmetics, yep. on all Season that passes. extra stuff that yep. they just don't have with a lot of Microsoft games. They wanted it with Halo and they dropped the ball on the multiplayer and the skins and the packs and all that stuff so hard that it wasn't even fit. Like they've got the system there for this game. They've <coughs> got a game that they that, that people spend money on. You're telling me if I get Call of Duty for free, include it with Game Pass, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to be way more likely to buy the day one skin pack or the, you know, tie into whatever kind of skin pack or like <clears throat> whatever it is. I'm like, oh man, this game usually costs 90 bucks, but I can get my skin pack for 20. Of course, I'm going to drop 20 bucks exactly. and make myself look yeah. like, you know, Deadpool with a Hello Kitty backpack. Great. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, what if they what if they said like first on Game Pass this skin pack, this cosmetic, Game Pass um, perks, or like, you wow. get a percent discount on season passes, yeah. or you get your season pass three days early on Game Pass. I cool. think those are all things they can do where people don't feel screwed because they're still getting it, but being a Game Pass member feels like I have a benefit that others don't. So it's it's a part of being in the Xbox ecosystem. Yeah. I think those are the plays they need to do. Oh, by the way, hey, in Call of Duty, if you're an Xbox fan and you're on Game Pass, you get a Master Chief skin. Game Pass, you get a certain rifle. So many games, like 
Games go in. You get a gears. Like you get gears and, skins. Mm-hmm. You get the chainsaw it. gun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's things they can do to make it better to play on Xbox. Hundred percent. If they leverage all of their studios together yeah. and yeah. make some synergy. Okay. Like Indiana Jones. Like you want Indy's hat in Call of Duty? Cool. It's a Game Pass Ultimate perk. Perk. Subscribe and you get Indy's hat on your account. Doom guy, Deal. Doom guy armor, Doom, Doom guy, guy gun. Yeah, uh, right. you could get something silly. You know, you could bring in. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything silly with Xbox. You know, Sea of Thieves. Mark, they could have like you know maybe a uh, instead of a uh, knife for a like melee weapon, they've got a scimitar from Sea of Thieves. They've got skulls. They've got. There's a lot of stuff they can do right. with their brands and IP because they have so many now. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, that they could really go full bore and make it. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's call of duty folks. We don't know what's going to happen, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the biggest thing that Xbox owns. They truly own it this time around. And I don't think they're going to be playing games. So hopefully they use it for, um, you know, in a way that makes sense for everybody. So with that, um, can I take a three minute break? And yeah, be right back. As as do yeah. A, okay. Refill, I'm going to pause and I'll be right back. So we talked about the bad news. We talked about Xbox Redacted, which is Call of Duty. Don't be silly. Um, but now we're going to get into the actual Xbox Showcase. Um, this is pr- typically around 60 minutes long. Um, and I'll be curious to see what they do, if they're going to do more of the developer direct and the things they've done recently, or if they're going to have the talking heads on stage. Uh I would recommend they don't bring on the talking heads on stage and just show the games. Um, But from that, we're going to do three categories of areas we want our experts to talk about. What we expect to see, what we want to see, kind of like our hopes and dreams, and then uh, what we don't want to see. Kind of the things are like, please don't, but you're going to do it, of course. Think about like Wii Music and Robbie Drums. (laughs) There you go. Perfect. So, Chris, what do you expect to see from the Xbox Showcase? Uh, um, I mean, at this point, it almost seems like all all of Xbox fandom is like willing it to fruition, uh, and that is like a new gears, uh, a new gears game in some some way, shape, or form. And and you know, Gears Five did kind of end on a cliffhanger. So like you know, where where is where's six? How and I'm also curious how they're going to do that because you had a choice in Gears Five. So what do they do with that? It'd be cool if they they allowed you to continue your choice because of the mm. you know you you have the save file or whatever the case may be. Like you know that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah so that's definitely what I expect to see showing up on xbox but i these prediction things todd and and mark i'm i'm so terrible at them so i'm knowing uh, knowing knowing me it'll be not there at all because i, <laughs> I ruled it too so yeah. oh no if mark's a kind soul he'll take clips and put it on TikTok. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's what I. That's what I'm expecting right now. So, so the gear six is going to go back to gears of war or is it going to stay gears I don't know Just why they changed it. It's so weird. Is it because of God of it's War? Like, like the, the well, the that's acronyms? the thing. God of War, you just like it's war, <laughs> war. Yeah, gears. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, or God, I guess. Yeah, God or gears. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like the G O W kind of thing. It's like God yeah. or Gears of War. So like just saying gears makes it easier marketing yeah. standpoint. So I don't know. It's like a, it's like a, a movie from like uh, was it the Pixar uh, adjacent team? Now it's Gears. Like that movie was it Robots? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not like that. Yeah. So, Mark, what do you expect to see from the Xbox Showcase? You can do many or just one. I will do two, uh, but they're ba- basically the same kind of like I, I can do like a two for uh, all at once, uh, and that is Indiana Jones and Perfect Dark getting gameplay. Wow, perfect dark, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah, especially uh, especially indie. But I really expect yeah. to see some more from Perfect Dark. I expect to see something uh, from there. So I think deep dive into indie and t- 
teasing some perfect dark. Okay. Do you buy the release date for because we've hear, heard some leaks about when Indie's going to launch, and I'm hearing like December. Do you do you buy that, that they're going to put it out to basically be after Black Friday, kind of kind of the late game, the last game of the year? Seems like a weird it's, play, but Microsoft big enough, right? Shit yeah, past. yeah. They also have done <laughs> stupid stuff. Continue yeah, it's to weird. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What you got? I'm expecting Xbox to do a lot of fan service to bring a lot of people really happy. I think we're going to see the ABK catalog um, really embraced. Like mm. these are the backwards compatible games. They're going to be brought forward, and we're going to get like uh, a, a roll of like the greatest hits. So we're going to get like Call of Duty. We're going to get Spyro, Crash. Uh, maybe hey, we bring Skylanders along. Hey, remember Skylanders? Oh man, yeah. Skylanders. Um, and you know some of the odds and ends. Maybe a prototype. Maybe they figured out the um, uh, all of the uh, licensing for like the old Marvel games, like Marvel oh. Ultimate Alliance, yeah. a Spider Man, and some of those games along the way. Um, so I expect really to see some of those heritage titles, um, and maybe even. Like all of the old Diablo games, I think of like Diablo Immortal, Diablo 2, all dropped on Game Pass right away. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe even um, they mention that uh, if you are a um, World of Warcraft s- subscriber, you will get a discount if you're a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber. That would be... And maybe. Game Pass Ultimate subscribers, if you're new to uh, Warcraft, you get all of the past content for free and you get that discount subscription. Dang. I'm thinking something like that. Mm-hmm. And they may say, and we're going to find out a way to bring world of Warcraft to consoles. Maybe that is one hell of an expense. That's that. Yeah. This is a lot of want. That, that's, I feel like well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think they're going to bring a lot with that <laughs> ABK thing to make people feel like, well, this is why we bought ABK, right. not because of just right. another call of duty, another King game and like that. I mean, right. I feel like they're going to show this is the value of what we spent that money on. And this is the value we bring to you as a game pass subscriber. And that's why you need to be there. Cause I think that's what they need to say. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why you subscribe and why you come versus just like, here's a handful of games that you don't know what you're going to get. And it might be like, hey, there's a house sim and there's a cleaning sim. And then there's this game, this old game for me. And here you go. Enjoy. It looks like a lot. but I'll play two or maybe none. Um, so I think that's what we're going to get. We're going to get really the ABK like back cat, backwards catalog is going to be shown to really build. It's kind of like when Xbox did that backwards compatibility thing that really got people excited. And I think it's something you do. This is kind of like their is peace it, offering. Yeah, people like, say, hey, look. Even with Bethesda, right? Like they they threw all the Bethesda games into Game Pass and that was, yeah. it was great. Rare so, replays yeah. the same kind of deal. Yeah. I, yeah. I, smart play. Yeah. Um, so that's what I one thing I think they will do. And I think the other thing that we're going to see is... I think we're going to see um, that we do see a vowed and it looks a lot better and then finally reassures people that Obsidian delivers and they deliver on time. So I think because a lot of people were not impressed, but I think this is where uh, Obsidian delivers and they show, hey, I, 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 hey, you have Elder Scrolls, we have Elder Scrolls at home. And it's coming to Game Pass. So I think that's going to be a big thing because I don't know when people think they're going to get the next Elder Scrolls. So I think that's going to be a big thing. Uh, and I'm giving you one more. Okay. I expect to see a Fallout remaster announced. Wow. Not sure which one, hmm. but one of the th- either three or um, New Vegas will get announced as a remaster huh. in time for Fallout Season 2 on Prime. Good call. Yeah, I'd see that. Okay. Um, Next category, what you want to see. These are the things that defy uh, rational thought. It defies what makes financial sense. This is what your heart wants when you dream at night. And you say, honey, I love you. But if I could get this, I would give you and the children away. (laughs) Okay. All right. 
Maybe. I mean, maybe you may not feel that way. I don't know. I don't know if you ever told your wife that. Like, if I could get this, honey, I would leave you and the kids in a second. I've got everything's okay. My son's going to college. Yeah, great. Good. My 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 son's going to college, so I'm good to go. My wife's like, hey, honey, you do you play your games if you want. So yeah, she's fully supportive. Okay, good. Good. Just checking for no apparent reason. Um, Chris, how you doing for this one? Oh, for me. Um, what I want to see. Uh, well. Hi Fi Rush 2, but that's probably not. Oh, oh, um, God, imagine that. Linux. Yeah. Uh, who owns the license <laughs> of that now? Uh, no, but uh for me, I I would love to see I would love to see another Quake. Oh, yeah. Cause they that's another IP that Bethesda has, and it's like, come on, let's let's see what you got. It yeah. is just yeah, they did Doom Eternal and, and that was a great game, but it's been a bit, been in a little bit. So let's uh let's see what else it is uh is is doing. What what else they're cooking? Um and and obsidian, like I just I want I want to see another like a mini or a smaller experience from obsidian or just just from some other studio, just something small um that you know that's charming and that's just like lets people just do something creative instead of you know the grind of making these larger games that you know that people are expecting as well Microsoft to do so so another game that will be shown and then canceled or <laughs> <laughs> I mean critical <laughs> awards and then you're done <laughs> uh I so i've got it chris if i've got this right a small charming game mm mm-hmm. mhm that sounds about right. Is that yeah? Does that encapsulate small, what you want? Okay, yeah, small charming game. Quake and a small charming game. Yeah. They go hand in hand, like uh, what is it? Doom guy and Annabelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Mark, I'm I'm gonna go with uh, another simple two parter. Uh, first off, Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> <laughs> It's I just a new band go for Mark. Go Come on, Mark. That's it. I think I think Xbox needs some lighter stuff. Well, yes. I think they keep trying to be like we can be serious, just like Sony. We can do this kind of. And like I said before, they keep dropping the ball. So stop doing that, or like continue to do it, but like also add some fun to your games because games can be fun. And just like, just take this IP or like anything, like insert like Spyro or something, whatever you want to do. But like, I think a banjo game, again, could just be fun. Could just like one, showcase how powerful the Xbox is. You have the Series S, it's accessible for families. They can encroach a little bit on Nintendo's turf and be like, we have some fun games. We have some accessible games for the whole family, and they look way better than a 12-year-old tablet <laughs> with shifty Joy-Cons. Like, it, Xbox can do that. I think that's that would be fun. And the second thing that I want is Goonies DLC for Sea of Thieves. I want that to be the next thing Ooh, we've had. Wow. Pirates of with the Sloth and... Uh... Uh, yeah. We've had uh, what I'd Willie Monkey Island. Yeah, let's toss in the next big one is going to be I want it to be Goonies, um, and yeah, I think like the Pirates one was great, Monkey Island, awesome. But like, if I'm going Pirates, next thing I want is um, is, Goonies, is wow. the Goonies man. That's it. Like, go through some like one eye Willie treasure caves, big water slides, big set cool. pieces, uh, a crazy octopus that'll get cut. And uh, from the final, did you guys ever see the Goonies octopus? Like, thank no. God that got cut. It is a horrible no. scene. Horrible scene. Look it up. There, there are some like when oh they filmed it. It's terrible. Could the have octopus been. looks really bad. It's just oh, wow. it is a terrible scene. I'm so glad it got cut from the movie because it would have taken it from a classic to like what the hell am I watching? It's that bad. Um, <sighs> so check it out. Um, but it's fantastic to just see in retrospect of like, why, well, why did they even film this? Um, but I want all, all of that DLC for Sea of Thieves. So that's my wants. It's never, it's the, neither of those are going to happen, um, <laughs> but that's what I want. 
what if what if Elder Wild just turns into Banjo Kazooie and it was that all along? It was like, just kidding, that wasn't actually a thing. It's Banjo Banjo Three. Is that what it's called? Banjo Kazooie Three. I don't know. I mean, you gotta play with the name, right? Three. There's yeah, Banjo Fourie. I guess with this this one, right? Because nuts. And- oh, that's right, nuts and bolts. Yeah. Um. So Banjo Fourie. Yeah. Um. But I also want, like I said, like I want the full kind of thing, like add a Kazooie backpack in Call of Duty. So you're running around <laughs> yeah. and replace the machine gun noises. So like, ah! um, that if you just like, just go full on like corporate synergy with this and just like yeah. have it in, have Banjo Kazooie across, just across the board in all these super serious Microsoft uh, IPs and just have like, yeah, just that. Here for nice. You. I like that. I like that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit off kilter. So um, I think we don't know what Double Fine is going to be doing next. So what I want to see is I want Double Fine to go all in in their back catalog and make like a weird like mashup team up in like an action platformer where it's like um, it's, 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 if you think of all like the old Double Fine, it's like um, and, and their games they've done with um, – Tim Schafer, it's going to be like Day of the Tentacle plus Manny Calaveras plus uh, the kids from Psychonauts plus this, and it's just like a weird team up. What was that other game they did, Costume, Costume Quest? Quest yeah. It's that too, and but we're going to make it mash it up, and it's going to be a weirdo where they're going to be like um, fully infused in all of the um, modern day aesthetics of like a Psychonauts two engine. But it's going to be a weird mashup where the world's – it's like a multiversus wow. with that. <laughs> um, and I think you could really do something fun with it. And Tim Schafer would just go crazy. Like he'd play with the environments. He'd, he'd, he'd put team-ups together with characters you wouldn't expect. And it would be just so fun and interesting and neat. Mm-hmm. Um, and even bring in the guy um, – I'm trying to remember was the name, the other guy he worked with with all the LucasArts games. But basically – and they could collaborate and get all those characters together because they're really beloved franchises that I just think could be fun and playing with it in a very much like Chippendale Rescue Rangers. If you saw that Disney film and play with it, that could be a ton of fun. And then out of the blue, hey, we're taking on like all right, the Xbox Microsoft like villains and things like and then they play tongue in cheek and it's like, hey, there's um, what was the the leader of Xbox when it went horrible, horribly wrong? Don Matrick. Yeah. Don Matrick. We just give him like we, we use him, but we give him a stupid name. Mm-hmm. But it's really Don Matrick. And they just go full on like crazy. And then, of course, uh, Jack Black's involved and Tenacious D. That's what I want. Yeah. I love that that'd be cool that's fantastic yes um other than that i want the team behind flight simulator because yes i know people like flight simulator they say that but they don't really mean it (laughs) i want that team to make crimson skies but i want it to be more like a um xbox uh utilizing their franchises within a crimson skies to basically um bring back you know when halo did like some flight stuff um in what was it halo 3 mm. i want that to be halos versus gears flight combat uh in a crimson skies type of, like engine mm. i think that would be so fun but maybe i'm wrong don't do that at all and uh, just bring back <laughs> crimson skies 2 so take that back re- that's the redacted part i'm redacting that part that's i just really, want crimson skies 2 it's really by crimson the flight skies. simulator team <laughs> Yeah, nice. so there you go. I, I I've taken that back. So that's what I want to see, and nobody else does want to see any of those things. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so now we get to the weird part of the show, which is like this doesn't make any sense, but it truly does make sense. What you don't want to see? What are those things when you watch a a showcase and you're like? Oh, I can tune out for 10 minutes because this isn't for me. Uh, you know, those things you get, you know is going to show up. And it's like, why did this take 10 minutes when it should have taken two or none at all? So, Chris, what you don't want to see at an Xbox slash redacted showcase? Uh, I know. I know the K stands for king, but I don't want to see a mobile game. 
Mm. I don't want to yep. see a mobile game on. Yep, yep. But I, I, but I also get it. I, I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why Microsoft made this acquisition is really to get into that mobile market. Because, uh, oh, correct me if I'm wrong. They're, they're, they're doing something like they're trying to make their own store. On, yep. I, I don't want to see any of that either. Like, keep that for something else. Yeah. Like this is this this showcase is more for the um hard, I don't want to say hard like the the more like the, the the more like gamer experience I don't know what you want to say like not 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 <laughs> the person playing on their phone not the person playing on their phone the one it's that's not the, the casuals yeah. it's the hardcore right yeah. Yeah. yeah so like I want I want that to be what they focus on this round like and you can have a, a developer direct that could just focus on mobile stuff if you want to yeah. but people don't that play to. 300 hours of candy crush a year and nothing else aren't watching this showcase <laughs> right don't tell us right. about it Exactly. No yeah. casual mobile. Is no that the best mobile. way to put it? No, no casual, casual mobile. mobile. Um, okay. And uh, I think the other thing I don't want to see. I'm going to I'm gonna get some hate on this, but just not another real-time strategy. Mm. Not, oh, really? Not, not a okay. fort. Like, is, I mean, like, I, I mean, they're impressive. Don't get me wrong. Like, the civilization, the, I think it's Aura. All that stuff is very cool. Yes. Like, I, can, I can see the the appeal for for some people but again like that's a very niche market very niche i feel like they I don't always wrong. show well either it's uh, yeah exactly like, well. it's fun they can be fun to play if you're patient but if you're patient right but you know like they they just it's it's such a, a it's a strategy game and strategy never shows well on a showcase like this, you have 30 yeah. seconds to show why a four hour strategy session in a game is going to work really well. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't translate. I'm sorry. You can't build up an army and tr- plan an attack in a yeah. 30 second trailer and show why that's fun. It looks there's, like I finally everything. built that street. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. really exciting. That there's street one, has been built. There's one game I will, I will, I will make an exception for, and that is Starcraft three. Hmm. Like if that, but those games the, always have like so, two ass CGI trailers that show right. No game I mean that, in, in and that's that just like you know, like that's yeah, that's how they get them. That's how yeah. that's how they got yeah, me exactly. Those games. And then you play and you're like, what the hell am I doing? This is <laughs> I don't look as cool as I want to look. No. Yeah, Zerg Rush. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so no casual mobile, no RTS. Chris, uh, make sure you leave your. Um, <laughs> A, a email address at the bottom of the podcast. Yeah. All right. I will do that. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mark, what do you not want to see? Mine's at the Xbox simple. Showcase? Mine is very simple. Don't show me why Game Pass is great. Mm. <laughs> yes. I don't want a Game Pass recap. Don't tell yeah. me here are the hundred games you can get on Game Pass right now. Henry Earmuffs, I fucking know. Like I've been on game pass for years. I've been on game pass for multiple console generations and everyone watching knows the value of game pass. Show me what's going to be on game pass. Sure. But don't show me a recap of like, we have gears of war three and halo master chief collection and rare replay. Nobody cares. Stop wasting the time to do it. Right. That's it. I, 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 I will, I will second the fact that, a lot of times, even the messaging on what game is available on Game Pass gets really muddy. Yeah, like so, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Do that. Do that going forward. Yeah. Like you know, like the next Call of Duty, and it's going to be on Game Pass. Great, awesome. Indiana Jones Day One Game Pass. Cool. That is great. You keep my subscription rolling, but mm-hmm. like, don't show me a recap of the games that I can already play or already have been playing. Don't be like sea of thieves is great. And it's on game pass. Unless you're going to be like, again, here's sea of thieves with goonies. Don't forget it's on game pass. And if you're a subscriber, you get the goonies DLC for free. That's cool. But don't just be like, I don't know. We dropped like monkey Island last year and that's on game pass. You should really check it out. It's like, I already did check it out. Shut up and show me something new. Right. Right. Like that's, I just, I hate those stupid recaps of like stuff we've been playing for four years already. Like, 
Yeah. Stop wasting time. If that's what they're doing, like just pack it up. You know what I mean? Like that's just <laughs> not working, right? No, that's if, if you like, weren't interested before it was available, why would I finally like, oh, mm-hmm. after you told me 85 times, oh, I think I do agree with you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I will try that real time strategy. You've convinced me. Like, yeah. no, Microsoft. A cozy game that's been out there for 85 months. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. <laughs> like, it's just, it's not, that's, that's not the way to get people. Like, show the new stuff. Yeah. Game Pass is what Game Pass is. We know it already. Just just, just drop it in there. We know the value. Show me the new stuff that's going to keep my subscription rolling. I don't need a recap of why I've had Game Pass for four years or <laughs> 10 years or whatever it is at this point. If I haven't played it in 10 years, I'm not going to play it in year right. 11. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's Okay. It. I'm going to do a couple of things here. It's going to, you're going to love this because I'm kind of building a lot of this stuff. Um, I don't want the montage where they don't tell you the name of the damn game and then you have to figure it out where it's available and what it was. That is silly. If it's not important for you to tell us what the name of the game is, and so don't put it there. Do it something later or something else because it just under, it kind of makes us all feel like fools and we have to take notes by the time it's done well, forgotten it anyways. Are you re- Are you taking notes during the show? What is that game? Let me look it up. It's the game that kind of looked like this. What, well, I know. I hate that. I hate the montage where it's like, here's 85 games in two minutes. Try to keep up, folks. Yeah. And some of those, and maybe three of those will be on Game Pass. Maybe. We'll tell you later. Who knows? I don't like that. I don't like the montage where it's not important enough to tell us or give them their time. When we saw like... 15 minutes of this other game that's, you know, uh, another Honkai Skyrail, uh, a free-to-play game, and it's like, I'm never going to play that game. Don't do that. So don't do that. Um, I don't want any talking heads. I don't want anybody telling us how great games. We love our developers. We're in for the community. I don't want any of that. It's, we're done with that era. It's, it, I don't want Phil on stage uh, wearing a shirt to Mark's thought of, it's going to be a <laughs> game that we're going to make. No, it's not. It's yeah. all a... Thing to steal your heart and make you feel like oh xbox is one of us i don't want that no talking heads mm. i also don't want the next big free-to-play game from china for 15 minutes like what is that black sand soil game they'd be like that looks cool isn't that like the last game that you showed us that was cool mm. and we're gonna play it no i don't want that i don't want that either because quite honestly it's not there um and I really want them to be clear on what I don't want to see is vague, not clear on what this game is going to be on and when it's coming. Mm-hmm. I If you don't have a date, put TBD. And if you don't know if it's where it's going to land, PC or Game Pass, don't show it then. Because you should at least let us know that it's going to be where we can expect it to be so we know it's on Game Pass. Because they do a lot of weird things like all these games going forward will on on Game Pass. Well, what about those games? I don't know. Um, And then you have to wait till the press release after. I don't like that. Um, And other than that, if a game's close in for release, I don't want 30 minutes of it. Mm. I want, I'm showing up to get more information about what's going to happen that I don't know about that I can't necessarily buy this year. Um, You're not selling the people on the showcase about games that are coming to Game Pass because they're already on board. Show us, spend more time on the games that are going to happen that want us to keep on Game Pass for the next 12 months. If g- games are not going to happen, be honest, but we'll go from there. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I just, I'm just tired of the nonsense that we see in all of these game shows, and it's ridiculous. Yeah. And don't show Call of Duty in the standard show if you're going to do it in the redacted show. <laughs> yes. Yes, that. Don't. Yep. yep. Like, don't show a Starfield if you're going to give us a hour of Starfield yeah. later. It's silly. Yeah. It's Here's taking up real estate time. Call of Duty followed by 30 minutes of Call of Duty. Exactly. Yeah. So, sorry. It's it's no more BS of these shows. Yeah. Get us in. Get us locked. Tell us why we need an Xbox or Game Pass. I think, right? Is that where we're at? Yeah. Especially yeah. now that it's not E3. Like these are all separate things. There's no need to do all of this 
You know what I mean? Like at any given time, like if you don't have enough to show, do it in July. If you don't have an hour to fill, do a 40 minute direct or what, you know what I mean? Like just like there's, there's, when these companies are doing their own thing, like Nintendo's great at this because they will do here. We're doing 20 minutes today of this or the next time it's like, we're doing 45 minutes of that. And it's like, Oh shit. Yeah. Nintendo's really got something to talk about this time. Or like, Oh, Nintendo just hasn't talked to us in a while. They're going to talk about indie games for 15 minutes. Cool. That's neat. I love that. And I respect it because Nintendo's great at pacing. And some of these other companies, it's like, again, here's a sizzle reel for 86 games in 40 seconds. Try to keep up. Or here's why you should get game pass. Or here's this stupid thing. Like, yeah, I'm so sick of the bullshit. Like you're right on Todd. Like all of that stuff needs to just be cut. Yeah. It just seems like it's a key and peel skit ready to be done. <laughs> it feels like we keep doing this and nobody figures it out. Um, it is funny though, Mark, when I thought about the last Nintendo thing they did, it was like, here's endless ocean. It's a thing. It's big. <laughs> it's endless ocean. It's, yeah. What are you doing here? Let's yeah. move on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And here's a 65 Metacritic game for you. Enjoy. Cause you liked it on Wii. Cause we had all those great games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, um, I'm assuming you will all agree with everything we said. So don't worry about Absolutely. that. You don't have to tell us how great we are. Um, but with that, we end the show. Um, thank you all for going on this journey in gaming. Uh, Chris, tell people where they can keep up with you in the world of gaming. Oh man. Um, well, I, you can, you can find me every so often on, on Twitter or whatever at TC1H1D. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do better at, uh, threads, but, uh, that's the same thing there. TC1H1D. And, uh, yeah, we, we drop our episodes ideally every Wednesday evening. Um, we are, are, I think we cracked 170 episodes at this point. So we're, we're trying to catch up to you guys on the secret, <laughs> secret friend side of things. So, yeah. Um, Amazing. yeah. So it's been, it's been fun and, uh, yeah, you know, interact with us there and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep, keep this Xbox game pass game rolling until the wheels fall off, I guess. So. Chris, um, as your uh, marketing manager, <laughs> tell people if they want to keep notes on their games, where could they do that? Well, they can do that. Uh, I did. <laughs> I did come up with an Xbox Game Pass journal uh, that is uh, it's out on Amazon, and you can grab it for it's, it's like seven bucks or something on there. Uh, it, where you can kind of follow along with us during our episodes where we talk about our games. It's all formatted in that way. And then you can write your little notes, scribble it down. And uh, yeah, just, just like I figured it was a little different from the, the, the other merch that p- folks have like t-shirts and stuff like that. So I was like, let me try something a little different. So that's what we came up with and, you know, it supports the show and we, we appreciate everyone's purchase. So we appreciate Appreciate it, Todd. When you uh, you keep being my marketing manager for it, so it's <laughs> great. It's, it's an fantastic. awesome thing, and you that's should cool. be proud of it. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, I ordered it. People love it. Chris, you know what? Pitch your shit is all I say. <laughs> you know what? Pimp your shit. All right, we'll do. We'll do. Yeah, we'll put a note in on where people can get that on the show notes. So check that out as well. Mark, where can people reach out to you in the world of? video games you can follow me on instagram or tiktok at canardian underscore gamer and if you want to keep up with the weird uh things that i'm like 3d printing and uh doing so in cool. like star wars or other little fandoms you can go on uh, canardian underscore jedi for uh for this kind of stuff Right. And Mark needs to get more on threads. Come on, Mark. <laughs> I do. Get on I really threads. do. I've I tag like, you all the time. I know. And I, get go on and threads. I give it a little heart and I read through a few more threads and then I just do other things. <laughs> <laughs> Links in bio. Mark's there, there for that. I'm there. Links yeah. in bio. Yeah. <laughs> Um, for me, I'm primarily on threads these days as well at T extra for my personal account. If you want the weird things I talk about in sports after the show, I'm going to be watching the Timberwolves. Hopefully they beat the nuggets. Um, I also a diehard Minnesota fan and Michigan state fan. So check me out there for there. That's where I live. Um, and on all things, secret friends, unite at Secret friends, unite on threads, check out secret friends, unite.com and 
patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite if you want to check out our Patreon. Like uh, and, you know, join us where the cool kids are on our Discord as well, where we're talking about all the silly things. I like thinking of sports teams in a very literal fashion <laughs> and thinking of a Timberwolf versus a Chicken Nugget <laughs> is hilarious to me that the Chicken Nugget would even have a chance. Like, it's just going to get eaten. <laughs> They're the mutants right. from McDonald's. But I like, yeah, I like that, you know, like it's still anyone's game at any point. And like a little oh, cheeky nugget. Oh, Mark, a Pokemon fan wouldn't expect a Pokemon nugget to take on a wolf and not win. <laughs> Is it right? Yeah. Come I on. Mean, you get a literal bag of trash versus a god and it's still anyone's game if they're, you know, it's that's, that's See? the great thing about sports and Pokemon and um, weird literal weirdnesses in my brain i think we all need a mascot like pokemon type game of all the mascots from everything whether it's food sports yeah. or franchises i like it we need mascot uh collect them all whatever we call that okay. so um with that thought in mind where um who never knows where that takes you we are done with the show so once again thank you all for joining us on this weird journey in video games where we never know where we're going to end and folks remember it's always better to game together this podcast is part of the secret friends unite podcasting network visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows articles news reviews and more secret friends unite podcasts are available on apple google spotify and other podcast services around the world if you'd like to be part of the conversation you can join us on facebook or our new discord server or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.